It's time for Dodger Baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, Sportsnet LA presents the Dodgers as they take on the San Francisco Giants. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Monday evening to you. For the Giants, they come here having beaten the Dodgers 9 out of 12. They're three and a half games back. The Dodgers split six here, but they lost all six, played up north at AT&T Park. The pitching, Brett Anderson on the mound for the Dodgers with a record of 8-8. Eight and eight. He is 1-2 and two against the Giants this year, 1-4 and four lifetime. Jake Peavy is 4-6, and six, but he is 14-3 and three in his career against the Dodgers 7 and 1 here at Dodger Stadium. A lot of talk about no hitters, the Dodgers having been no hit twice in nine days. How about this one? Back in 1917, the Chicago White Sox were playing a weekend with the St. Louis Browns in St. Louis. And on Saturday, the Browns no hit the White Sox. Sunday, they had a doubleheader. Second game of the doubleheader, the Browns no hit the White Sox again. What did it mean? Not much. The White Sox went on to win the pennant and went on to win the World Series as well. And who did they beat? The New York Giants. And with that, sit back, relax, good ball game, and a whole lot more coming up right after this.
intertwined. In 2015, the story is no different. This year's edition of one of the game's great rivalries has been a one-sided affair to this point. The Giants have dominated in almost every facet of the game, taking nine of the first 12 meetings. But as the calendar turns towards the final month of the season, it's the Dodgers who hold a slight advantage in the race for the National League West. Tonight begins a sprint towards the finish. The first of seven head-to-head -head battles over the final month that will determine the fates of these two historic rivals. As summer winds down and October looms, there's a sense of urgency that fills both clubhouses and this stadium of 50,000 fans. The National League West hangs in the balance, and once again, it's the Giants and the Dodgers who will decide it. The rivalry continues. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Monday evening to you, wherever you may be. Not much else to say when you say Giants and Dodgers. Great deal of emotion involved with the fans and with the ball clubs. And, of course, for the Giants, they have given the Dodgers three slices of humble pie over the last few years. The Giants winning the World Series and becoming champions thanks to the wisdom of Bruce Boshi. And don't underestimate his value to the Giants. They won it in 2010. They won it in 2012. And last year, a long shot. They were the wild card and became the champions. When you look at Bruce Boshi's lineup, there are some names that are missing. One is back. Nori Aoki has missed 40 games, but he has returned in left field. Angel Pagan has missed 28. He can play. Hunter Pence has missed 78 games and he can play. Also, Joe Panic, their talented second baseman, he's banged up. So for the Dodgers, you have Aoki, followed by Matt Duffy, Brandon Belt, and Buster Posey, Marlon Bird, Brandon Crawford, Kelby Tomlinson, Gregor Blanco, and JP. So as Brandon Belt stands on the top step, staring out, Brett Anderson deep in thought and ready to go to work. Red with a record of eight and eight, he is one and two this year against the Giants, one and four lifetime. Very much of a ground ball hitter, so if he has his stuff, he'll get 10 or 11 ground ball. Aoki swings at the first pitch, doesn't get it, and the count 0 and 1. Aoki, a pest indeed, and hitting 294, four for six with a couple of RBIs against Anderson. Aoki, another swing, a little chopper up along first. Gonzalez will chase him out of the baseline, so he's out. The veteran umpire, Mike Winters, right there to call it. So Aoki grounds out to Adrian Gonzalez, and we have one down. Take a look at the Dodgers with the leather. Gonzalez and Utley, Rollins and Turner, Crawford, Jock Peterson returns to the wars, and Andre Ethier in right. Randall behind the plate, Anderson on the mound. Jock Peterson, by the way, playing center field. Dodgers have lost another one. Kike Hernandez goes down with a hamstring, though he's on the DL. And here's Matt Duffy. Duffy has played so well. When you look at his batting average, you wouldn't think so. With runners in scoring position, he's hitting 370. His overall batting average against the Dodgers is just 194. He takes one on the outside corner and they count one ball and one strike. How about these numbers? With runners in scoring position, hitting 370. With runners in scoring position and two out, hitting 391. He hits a hopper hard to Rollins. Jimmy stays with it, throws low. Nice backhand pick by Adrian Gonzalez. And we have two down here in the first inning and no score. And you would this immediately say, certainly if you're Don Mattingly, you're comforted in the fact the first two outs were ground balls. Brandon Belt has to furnish a lot of the power for the Giant, and he's doing just that. 17 home runs, 60 RBIs. Dodgers have kept him quiet. One home run and hitting 180 against them. And Brandon takes a pitch low, ball one, one and oh. After Belt comes Buster Posey. He missed a game. 
as Madison Bumgarner looks on. Big breaking ball in for a strike, and the count one and one. We'll see Madison Bumgarner tomorrow night, and we'll see plenty of Buster Posey tonight. Posey, by the way, is hitting 381 against the Dodgers. One one pitch, little cutter in for a strike. One ball and two strikes the count, two down in the first inning. One of the keys, if you've been following at all, you know that the Giants have won nine of the 12. Here's the one two pitch on the way, fastball low, with runners in scoring position. The Dodgers in this series, the 12 games, are hitting 187, and the Giants are hitting 303. So the bats have been quiet, Mattingly. Hopes for some noise tonight. And the pitch down and away. Three and two the count to Big Brandon Belt. Yasmani Grandall handling Anderson. Belt hitting 400 against left hand pitching. Started the year up and couldn't buy a hit. Swings and drives one down the right field line. This one is going to bounce off the box seats. And the throw into second base is not in time. So Brandon Belt hits the wall on a one hopper in the right field corner. And just like that, the Giants have a runner at second with two out. When it left home plate, it looked like it might have a chance, but it died right at the end and one hopped the wall. For Brandon Belt, who has now become a terror against left hand pitching, he's not much of an extra base hitter. Except if you want to discount 30 doubles, four triples, and 17 home runs. So Belt is at second, and here comes Buster Posey. We told you Posey hitting 381 against the Dodgers. He has three home runs against Dodger pitching. He's hitting 368 here at Dodger Stadium. Look out for the first pitch. Anderson delivers fastball, grounded foul outside of third. We say that. Because against the Dodgers on the first pitch, Posey is hitting 458. The Buster fouls off the first pitch, 0 and 1 the count. First inning, no score, two outs, and then Brandon Belt does what his last name tells you about and doubles into the right field corner. Strike one pitch on the way to Buster Posey is swung on. Lazy fly ball down the right field line, going foul and bangs off the railing. Over to close, but no chance. Andre Ethier. So no balls and two strikes. They count as Buster Posey checks back in. He has plenty of fans here. He well he should. The All Star, who's been a grinder for the Giants, playing 89 games as a catcher, 25 at first base, and add to that, he's had three games in league play where he's the DH. All right, Buster back up. No score, just starting first inning. Here comes Anderson, and it's down and away. Ball one, one and two. Posey had a good game against the Cardinals. He went three for four. He was also hit on the elbow by Michael Waka, so he missed Saturday's game. So one of five MVP catchers waiting, and the one two pitch is swung on. High fly ball playable the left center. Paul Crawford is calling, waiting, and makes the catch. So a two out double and then a fly ball for the third out. No runs to hit a man left. And at the end is half an inning. Giants nothing. Dodgers coming up.
Dallas at first. Justin Turner is there at third. Andre Ethier in right. Carl Crawford in left. Yasmani Grandal behind the plate. Jock Peterson in center field. And Brett Anderson on the mound. On the mound for the Giants, Jake Peavy, 6'1", 195, 34 years old, out of Sims, Alabama. And he is a country boy and delighted to be so. His mom, for instance, helped deliver the mail in the small town of Sims. When he was in high school there, he was 44 and 1. And he wanted to pitch badly for the University of Alabama. What did they offer him? $250 a semester to cover books. So he turned his back on his idol school and went to the bitter rival Auburn. There's first pitch to Jimmy Rollins in for a strike and the count 0 and 1. One of the odd things because of the no hitter yesterday turned in by Jake Ariata. TV ready in his strike one pitch on the way. Rollins slaps it into the gap in left center. It's going to drop for a base hit. So Jimmy Rollins leads off with a little fly ball dunker and the batter will be Chase Utley. Jimmy Rollins played over 2,000 teams for the Phillies and had one no hitter against his team. He's played 124 games for the Dodgers and there's been two no hitters against his team. Chase Utley played 1,551 games for the Phillies. He saw one no hitter against the Phillies. He's played nine games for the Dodgers and he's had two no hitters against his team. And interestingly enough both no hitters against the Dodgers Rollins and Utley made the outs in the ninth inning. First pitch to Chase swung on high fly ball to deep center carrying but not far enough for the Dodgers. Greg Blanco makes the catch. Rollins tags and he's in the second base. So Utley a fly ball deep enough for Rollins to tag and advance. So one out. Blanco went back to get it made a good throw but Jimmy Rollins still has wings on his shoes and he's able to beat the one hopper into the bag. So a runner at second with one out in the first inning no score. Remember the Giants left belt at second base with two outs. So Adrian Gonzalez trying to pick him up. Gonzalez, 24 home runs, 75 runs batted in. Brandon Belt thinking maybe Rollins had left too soon. First base umpire Mike Winters indicating no. In fact, Mike didn't even bother indicating. And the plate umpire, Marty Forster, didn't have much to do either. So one out, Rollins at second. We'll watch. Watch Blanco. Watch Rollins' right foot. There's the catch. And now he can leave, and he does. So good call by the umpires. Rollins into second. And now Gonzalez and Turner trying to pick him up. Jake Peavy looks back at second. Right hand is fastball, flipped in for a strike. And a count all in one. In his last six games against the Giants here at Dodger Stadium, Adrian is hitting 364, two home runs, three RBIs. PV out of his stretch, another look back at second, just staring at Rollins, turns and bluffs the throw. With a left hand hitter up, Brandon Crawford can move over to his left and fill up the middle. And also take a step or two away. Crawford has been out of the lineup since the 25th of August. And there's a line drive to left field in a crouch. Aoki makes the catch, trying to get under the lights and stay with the ball. So Gonzalez hits it hard, but right at the left fielder. Take a look at the Giants defensively. Belt and Kenley Tomlinson taking over for Joe Panic. Brandon Crawford and Matt Duffy. Then you have Nori Aoki, Greg Blanco, Marlon Bird, the newcomer. And in just a couple of games, he has certainly established himself in right. Buster Posey behind the plate. And Peavy now ready to work to Turner. So where you had the ground balls, two of the three outs with Anderson, you've had two balls hit in the air, 
Utley's long fly ball and Gonzalez pretty much of a line drive. So Rollins still at second and here is Turner. 15 home runs 51 runs batted in. Peavy ready delivers throws his pitch just off the plate for ball one. One and go. Dodgers watching Turner very carefully to make sure he doesn't break down. He's been playing six, seven games in a row. In fact, Chase Utley taking ground balls before this game at third base. The 1 0 pitch, and that's low. 2 0 the count. Jake Peavy on the mound was called up to the major leagues in 2002. About 25 people from Sims, his little league coaches, aunts, uncles, friends, mom, dad, they all flew to San Diego to watch him pitch. Five years later, he won the Triple Crown of Pitching and the Cy Young Award. The next one way outside, big slider, and a 3 and 0 count to Turner. On deck, a fellow who's been red hot, Andre Ethier. Ethier hitting 389 against right hand pitching. No score, bottom of the first inning. Turner back up, 3 and 0. PV at the belt looks back at Rollins who's dancing a little bit. The 3 0 pitch in for a strike and the count 3 and 1. When you ask Jake, who were your two mentors growing up in the big league? Boy, he had two great ones. Trevor Hoffman, the premier reliever for San Diego, and the great Greg Maddox. And as he said, there's no coincidence I got the Cy Young Award when I was with Greg Maddox. Three and one the count to Justin Turner. PV at the belt. Another look back at second. Three one pitch is a strike on the inside corner. Fastball with pretty good sink to it. And the count goes three and two. Jake Peavy is not only 14 and three lifetime against the Dodgers. He is seven and one here at Dodger Stadium. So three and two the count to Justin Turner. Rollins trying to take a big lead at second. Turner trying to pick him up. Peavy out of his stretch. Now the 3 2. There goes Rollins to third on a foul ball down the right field line. Out of play. So Jimmy has got the second base on a fly ball, trying to get the third on his own. He has stolen nine, has Rollins, and he's been caught seven times. So Rollins back to second base, three and two the count on Justin Turner. No score, first inning, two out. PV keeping the ball in his glove, hiding his right hand before reaching in. And the 3 2 pitch on the way. Jake delivers, and that's driven to the gap in left center. That's going to go to the wall. So here comes Rollins on a long double by Justin Turner. And the Dodgers jump out in front, one to nothing. So Rollins alertly tagging up and getting to second, and Turner on a 3 and 2 pitch drives him in. He got a breaking ball, but it seemed to hang over the plate, and Turner certainly straightened it out. So one to nothing Dodgers, and the batter is Andre Ethier. One of the things the Giants are struggling, they have lost four of their last five series away from home. That's a lot to be concerned about for Bruce Bosey. Plus the fact they are missing some of the fellows who really make the ball club do well. Hunter Pence. Angel Pagan and the second baseman, and that would be Joe Panic. Pence bundled up, Tim Hudson alongside of him, watching anxiously now as Andre Ethier checks in. Peavy ready, fastball, and that's in for a strike, and the count 0 and 1. Andre Ethier hitting 297, hitting 377 during the month. He has only five hits against Peavy. And a 143 batting average. So Ethier now trying to pick up Turner from second. And the strike one pitch on the way. He's jammed, swings and fouls late. And the count 0 and 2.
No balls and two strikes. They count to Andre Ethier. Dodgers are up against the first starting pitcher in Major League history to win two consecutive World Series with two different teams in two different leagues. Yep, that's Jake Peavy with the Red Sox in 13 and the Giants last year. Jake ready and his strike two pitch fastball away. One and two the count. What PV does, he commemorated each World Series by buying the vehicle in which he rode during the championship parade. So he has a World War II duck boat from Boston and a trolley car from San Francisco. He has him on his ranch. He has room. The ranch is 3,000 acres. One ball and two strikes. Ethi awaits. Jake ready and delivers, and it's sprayed foul upstairs off to the left. In fact, Peavy's father's name is Danny. And Danny said, Hey, Jake, we have a little mini Fenway Park built here on the ranch. I'm telling you, we have a lake that's off to the right side of the field. Why don't we dig a canal in there and we'll have a little miniature McCovey Cove? Well, he might do it. One and two, the count to Andre Ethier. A run in. Rollins single took second on Utley's long fly ball. Gonzalez lined out. Justin Turner, a 3 2 pitch double, and Rollins home with the run. Now the 1 2 pitch to Andre Ethier, very high, almost over his head, and the count 2 and 2. Interesting thing, too, Peavy has had a marvelous career, and he is legally blind without corrective lenses. Jake waiting. Now set at the belt. 2 2 pitch to Andre Ethier. Swung on and fouled at the plate. Breaking ball that might have gotten a little bit of Buster Posey. So back to second goes Justin Turner. Here's that breaking ball, and as it goes down, it jumped up and got a little bit of Buster Posey. Got a little bit of the right hand too and looking. Boy that right hand is really made up. You could read that signal from center field. Yellow fingernails and paint on the fingers. 2-2 two -two pitch coming up. PV ready back he comes fastball fouled away. So it's not only a pesky inning for PV. He's already made 19 pitches. If you're around PV when he has, let's say, a golf shirt on, you'll notice a tattoo on his farm or on, on one arm with the word outsider. And he also has another tattoo with the phrase Hoka Hay with decorative feathers. That's a nod to his cheek and uh, Cherokee Indian blood. All right, the 2 2 pitch on the way. Fastball lifted the center and deep. Back goes Blanco, still on the grass, and makes the catch one step on the track. A couple of long fly balls to center, and then the double by Turner picking up Rollins, and at the end of an inning, the Dodgers jump out in front, one to nothing.
who are struggling against the Giants but doing very well against the rest of the teams in the Western Division. Nine out of 12 with the Diamondbacks, eight out of 12 against the Padres, and nine of 13 with the Rockies. But Bruce Boshi is not only standing in the way, he's trying actually to get his ball club back into the race. They're trailing by three and a half. Back on June the 21st, the Dodger lead was a half a game. Though it's gone from that two months later to a three and a half game lead. Marlon Bird, Brandon Crawford, Kelby Tomlinson coming in. Brandon Bird has certainly been a great pickup. Nine games with the Giants. He has 14 RBIs. Right hand batter takes high ball one. Bird had a grand slam home run against Michael Waka. Interesting wearing other uniforms. Bird had been 0 for 18 and then the slam fouls another pitch away. The Giants however are only four and five in those nine games. Marlon Bird replacing an MVP for the Giants. That would be Hunter Pence. When Pence is playing the Giant record 34 and 18. Little chopper down to the mound to pick it up. Anderson fires to get him. And we have one away here in the second inning. Yeah, the Giants have an anchor around First their necks trying to run when they're without Hunter Pence. Then you add Angel Pagan and the young second baseman Joe Panic, and you can understand why the Giants are struggling. Pence the middle with the long goatee. Matt Kane has been struggling. For Kane, far off of the Matt Kane he used to be, he's two and four with an earned run average over six. One to nothing, favor of the Dodgers. Now, here's Brandon Crawford. Now, Crawford's been out for quite a while. Since the 25th, he had an oblique injury. Comes back tonight. He's hitting 412 against the Dodgers. And Brandon takes a strike, and they count one and one. Crawford has turned into a terrific player. They always talked about the fact he was a good hitter. Now he's rock solid at shortstop. The 1 1 pitch, breaking ball low, slow curveball. 2 and 1 to the pride of UCLA. Brandon Crawford. 2 1 pitch coming up. Anderson ready. And the next pitch, ground ball right side. Tricky hop. Up he stays with it. So Anderson has gotten five outs, four of them ground balls, and the fly ball hit Second by Posey. Kelby Tomlinson. Kelby Tomlinson coming up. Tomlinson has hit safely in 13 of 16 starts and hitting 328. So he's been a godsend for the Giants since they lost Joe Panic. Panic, they figure, will be back, however, as Tomlinson takes a strike. Panic due back on the 7th of September when the Dodgers are playing the Angels. That would be Labor Day. Strike one pitch is low. One and one, they count to Kedley. Anderson saying no to Yasmani Grandal. And a little too much time. Tomlinson backs out. Panic went on the DL with low back inflammation. The next pitch to Kelby is low. Two and one the count. One to nothing. Favor of the Dodgers. Top of the second inning. The next pitch swung on. Big chopper to short. Nice big hop. Collins makes the throw. And the Giants go quietly on three ground balls. So at the end of an inning and a half, Dodgers won, Giants nothing.
of your fans sitting together side by side. There is a difference in the rivalry between the two cities, and I guess the big difference is the fact that uh, you're talking about, what is it, almost 500 miles between San Francisco and Los Angeles. The first pitch now to Carl Crawford in for a strike and the count 0 and 1. Growing up in New York, where you had Giant and Dodger fans constantly together 12 months a year, it was a different look. Strike one pitch inside. How well I can remember in the dead of winter, I was working for the post office slotting mail. And what were we doing? Arguing about the Giants and the Dodgers slotting mail in December. Crawford a ground ball to the right side. Kelby Tomlinson makes the play and we have one out in the second inning. There's also another thing and I'm glad it's not here. There were many times when I would leave home to go to Abbott's Field or the Polo Grounds in the early 50s. Well hello my dear. My story is certainly not worth looking at you. Hmm. Anyway I would go to the ballpark hoping that no one would get hurt and I didn't mean the fans. I meant the players. There was a totally different attitude as Grandall takes a strike. In Ebbets Field, the visiting clubhouse and the Dodger dressing room, they were together. The only thing separating them was a door. And things got so hot, so angry with Sal Magley, etc., Jackie Robinson, they had to nail the door closed. They were afraid the teams would go after each other under the stands. Foul ball and that's going to go out of play. 0 and 2. And of course it's always a classic moment. On the great playoff game when Bobby Thompson hit the home run. Heard round the world. The Giants were so thrilled when they got to their clubhouse. There was all the champagne. The shrimp. The crab. Etc. Strike two pitch and Grandal lines it foul. Anyway what it was the Dodgers who were leading into the ninth inning of that game they had all the champagne and the beer and the soda pop and everything else and when Bobby Thompson hit the home run all they did was push everything from the Dodger clubhouse maybe 20 feet across to the other and that was it. So when the Giants got to the clubhouse they thought wow our management never quit they always knew we'd come back. Oh yeah. Strike two pitch is off speed on the corner. A change up gets Grandall. There's a little angry at Marty Foster, and down he goes. First strikeout for PD. And we have two out. Pretty good job of framing that pitch by Buster Posey. And that was Grandall's grumble being a catcher himself. So Jock Peterson coming up, getting a start. Enrique Hernandez down. Dodgers will have Joel Peralta, Mike Bolsinger, Austin Barnes, and Ian Thomas here by tomorrow. One to nothing, favor of the Dodgers, bottom of the second inning. PV into the windup, delivers, fastball, high ball one. One other thing about the rivalry, and it involved fans, the clubhouse in the polar grounds was dead center, about 465 feet away something like that. One old pitch on the way is outside wooden staircase going up to each clubhouse. And there were little platforms outside of each dressing room door. When the Giants won their room was raucous to say the least. Two old pitch on the way in for a strike. The Dodger dressing room was absolutely quiet. And all this noise coming from the giant dressing room plus several thousand people who had run onto the field and were on the grass looking up to the giant clubhouse. Next pitch high ball three. And I'll always remember the silence in the Dodger dressing room the noise in the giant clubhouse the roar of the fans on the field and the voice of Eddie Stanky imitating Red Barber. 3 1 pitch line foul. Stanky, of course, had played for many years with the Dodgers. A southerner like Red. 
And it wasn't so much that he was making fun of Red, but he was imagining how Red Barber must have called Robbie Thompson's home run. That was a memory that I'll never forget. Okay, three and two the count. They've loaded up the right side on Jock Peterson. Peavy into the windup. Bill Evers swung on a high, and I mean high, pop fly. It will be Tomlinson, the second baseman, and that's the inning. So the Dodgers go one, two, three, and at the end of two, Dodgers one, Giants nothing. Madison Bumgarner and Zach Granke tomorrow night and then Mike Leap and Clayton Kershaw the final game of the three game series. Also remember four big games left between these two clubs starting on the 28th of September. You can purchase by visiting Dodgers.com slash tickets. Look out for the first pitch. That's the word on Gregor Blanco. You know what he's hitting on the first pitch 488. And can't take that one because it's up and in for ball one. The number one first pitch hitter in the National League, Ben Paulson of Colorado, then Blanco, followed by A.J. Pollock and Matt Kemp. The 1 0 pitch on the way, another pitch up and in, 2 0 the count. But there are a lot of very good first ball hitters in this series. Buster Posey, 458, Brandon Belt, 418, Matt Duffy, 415. 2-0 is slapped down the line. It's going to go foul. Crawford's in pursuit, but he'll run out of room. And Brandon Crawford is a 381 hitter. Two and one the count to Gregor Blanco. Crawford cooling off in the dugout alongside Brandon Belt. Two and one the count. One to nothing Dodgers. Rollins single took second on a long fly ball by Utley. Turner doubled him in. The next pitch fouled away. And Blanco up there with a two ball two strike count. Blanco comes in handy to play center field. With Angel Pagan down. Gregor's from Venezuela. Along with his two brothers, they played. His twin Gregory played in the Angel and Pirate minor league system. The next pitch, a chopper to short. Rollins has to hurry and a head first dive, and Blanco beats the throw. Great effort by Gregor Blanco as he takes a base hit on a ground ball to Jimmy Rollins. Tim Wallach on the phone. So we have a chance to salute a friend of ours, John Pratt. 
He's the Dodger video replay coordinator. John unfortunately is not with us. He's back in New Hampshire. The death of his father. But we do understand that John is picking up the ball game. And we want him to know that we send him him our condolences. And we hope at least watching the Dodgers makes him feel a little bit better. So Gregor Blanco hustles his way to a base hit. It's one to nothing favor of the Dodgers top of the third. And here's Jake Peavy. For Anderson he's allowed two hits. Remember he gave up that double to Brandon Belt. Peavy shows bun. Anderson ready and delivers. Jake fouls it away off to the right. And the count 0 and 1. Bruce Boshi with a ball club that doesn't figure to score a lot of runs. And it was interesting they got so many base hits yesterday and still lost a one run game. 0 and 1 the count. PV shows bunt, but instead a high throw to first. For PV, he's going to have Justin Turner breathing right down his neck. I mean, Turner was running head first. Let's we'll see if he does that again. No balls in one strike. Here comes Turner, and this pitch misses, and a one ball, one strike count. PV checking with Roberto Kelly, who played for the Dodgers back in 1995. Bill Hayes coaching at first. One nothing favor the Dodgers top of the third. Blanco at first nobody out draws another throw. Blanco has been in over a hundred games. Batting eighth in the lineup he doesn't do very much running. He has stolen two bases and been caught once. The one one pitch on the way the bunt is down picked up by Grandal who fires to second but not in time to first. Wonderful throw by Grandal. That thing came out of a cannon to get down there. So Blanco, who runs well, is nailed on a busted sacrifice. Take another look. The bunt gets down, but Grandal pounces on it and then just sets for the throw, and Rollins handles it. The only difference about that, normally, on a sacrifice when a right hand batter is the hitter. The second baseman breaks and covers. But with Peavy they had Rollins cover and turns into a force play. Aoki grounded out in the first inning the pest as we called him because every time you looked up in the previous games Aoki was doing something very very well. He takes a breaking ball low. Two balls and no strikes. One run two hits for the Dodgers no runs two hits for the Giants. Matt Duffy on deck. 2 0 pitch on the way to Aoki and down he goes. It was high. And he's very slow in getting up. Almost got the edge of the helmet and he went down in a heap. Crowd is booing, and Bruce Boshi coming out of the dugout. I don't know whether the the Giants want the plate umpire to call that an intentional pitch. Aoki, meanwhile, waits. Aoki's father is in the insurance business. Wotus on the phone. I think maybe the Giants thought that pitch hit the just the bill of the helmet. I know up here it looked close enough. No hit batter. That's the pitch right up there. And of course when the helmet kind of turned a little bit. The thought was maybe it was nicked. All right. Three and oh the count to Nori Aoki. Left handers pitch. Anderson a strike. Three and one. We have one out top of the third. Dodgers lead the Giants 1 0. 13th meeting of the year between the two. 
three one pitch is a strike. Aoki was on his way to first base. So Nori Aoki who had missed over 40 games. And they're happy to have him back. Three and two. Aoki in a crouch as well. Swings fouls it away. Aoki has a very stiff wristed swing. You don't see him roll the top hand over. He does have five home runs. Three and two. Holds that bat parallel over the top of his head. Swing slaps one down the left field line foul. He was carrying his bat so he didn't think much of that anyway. Three and two. Let's take a look at the swing. If you're watching on TV watch the hands. They'll move across. But see one hand comes off the bat and he doesn't roll it at all. So he's not going to give you much power but he does have five. And boy he can make contact. Three and two the count. Anderson delivers check swing they're going to look no swing and it's ball four. So Aoki one way or another gets his way aboard. Down to second goes PV. Anderson now in a little trouble with Matt Duffy coming up. Just did fight it to keep that bat behind the front of the plate. So here's Duffy. Matt out of Long Beach leading all rookies in hits. He has 132 hits batting 301. With runners in scoring position. He's hitting 417. Well he's got one out there. PV at second representing the tying run. Duffy meanwhile takes a strike and the count 0 and 1. Dodgers lead one to nothing and the Giants threatening against Brett Anderson. Duffy working that bat back and forth now quiets it. And he probably bangs it to right base hit. Now let's see. They will stop Peavy at third. A uh, one hopper to the plate by Andre Ethier. But they're not going to run the pitcher especially with one out. So Duffy a line drive single to right. And Anderson up to his hips in trouble. With the bases loaded and one out. Brandon Belt coming up. And remember Belt doubled in the first inning. So Duffy just goes down to get it slaps it the other way clean single to right. Aoki moves on to second base. Peavy stops at third. There was no chance they were going to try to run Peavy in. So the bases are loaded one out. And here's Belt one for one. Anderson delivers slow hook off the plate. Ball one. One and oh. The Giants have eight grand slams this season. That's quite a number. One ball and no strikes. Next pitch swung on and missed. Good fastball. Belt certainly had a hack at it. Belt, however, not an effective hitter with bases loaded. Just hitting 143 and looking for his first hit. One ball and one strike. Buster Posey on deck. Anderson's fastball pulled foul. Bouncing that into the giant dugout. Boy, that's really turning on a fastball. Just about hit it over his right shoulder. And it bounced right into the dugout. One to nothing. Favor of the Dodgers. Giants threatening in the third. Bases loaded. One out. Peavy, Aoki, and Duffy are out there. And the next pitch is just off the plate. Oh, what a miss that was. Two and two the count. Brandon heaving a big sigh. Meanwhile, Yasmani Grandal trying to pull that thing into the strike zone. Two two pitch coming up. Belt swing slaps it into center base hit. PV will score and that's it. They will just go 90 feet at a time. And we have the game tied up. And Belt is two for two. So Belt line drive single. Everybody moves up a notch. Duffy to second. Aoki to third. PV to the dugout. And the batter is Buster Posey. 
So Anderson has given up four hits and a run. Rick Honeycutt going out to talk to his pitcher as Belt chats with Bill Hayes. Buster Posey, as always, in the middle of the action. We were mentioning it last night when the Cubs were here and John Lester was pitching, the Giants wanted desperately to get Lester. So they had all the executives go to Lester's home just outside of Atlanta. And who drove about three hours to get to Lester's house, rang the doorbell, Lester opened the door, and Buster Posey said, Hi, I'm Buster Posey. I'd like to be your catcher for the next six years. Lester was blown away, but eventually still signed on with the Cubs. So Buster checking in. 5 for 11 with the bases loaded. Time for the moment. Posey has actually been a better clutch hitter with runners in scoring position and two out than one. And that first pitch in the dirt, ball one. Posey with RISP, runners in scoring position, one out, hitting 319. With two out, He's hitting 414. So we'll see what he does this time. Uh, Oki, Duffy, and Belt are all out there. 1-1 one, one tie, top of the third. Anderson ready comes back 1-0. That's swung on and popped up. It will be Adrian Gonzalez. The infield fly rule is called. And Buster Posey misses a tremendous opportunity. So a downcast Posey going back to the dugout. Six, That's a huge out. Take another look. There's just down a wee bit. Posey actually dropping to his right knee and almost fell over. Meanwhile, pops it up to Adrian Gonzalez. So the base is still loaded. And here's Marlon Bird. And we mentioned that Bird hit a grand slam home run in his first game with the Giants. So two out, one one in the third. Anderson trying to wiggle off a big hook. The left hand already in the pitch to Bird. Low ball one. As far as Marlin is concerned, he's accustomed to touching them all. He has eight grand slams in his career. Posey had a grand slam earlier this year against the Dodgers Mike Bolsinger. One ball and no strikes. So the veteran Brett Anderson trying to work his way out of the inning. And the 1 0 pitch on the way fouled off to the right out of play. One ball and one strike. So basically a sinker ball pitcher. Someone who relies on ground balls. Gets Posey on a high pop foul. Well not foul fair ball. Gonzalez caught it right near the line. One ball and one strike to Bird. Right hand batter takes a little high. Two and one to count. Marlin, given the Dodgers a bad time, hitting 329 against them. And the 2 1 pitch on the way, fastball fouled away. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Bases loaded. One run in. And we have a 1 1 tie in the third. This for Anderson will be his 30th pitch. Aoki, Duffy, and Belt all ready to go. Two out and a two and two count. Anderson says, okay. 2 2 pitch, little ground ball in the hole, going back to get it and not able to make a play is the Dodgers chase Utley and a run scores. It was a little ground ball. Utley was playing way over to his right with the right hand hitting Marlon Bird. He tried to come back, but there was just about no chance. The ball was not hit hard enough. So the little ground ball. It'll go as a base hit. Two runs come in, and it is three to one in favor of the Giants. 
one of those ground balls that would drive you crazy. One run automatically scored. That was Aoki. And when Utley had trouble picking up the ball, Duffy scored as well. So three to one in favor of the Giants here in the third inning. Giants have runners at first and second, and Brandon Crawford the batter. So it'll go as an infield single for Marlon Bird, and he gets two runs batted in. Three runs, five hits for the Giants. Belt now at second. Bird at first. Tough break for Anderson. Breaking ball line foul second deck off third base. 0 oh and 2 the count. No error on the play. Utley did not have a play at first base, and when the ball got away from him, the second run scored. 0 oh and 2 the count for Brandon Crawford. Anderson ready. Back he comes down and away. Check swing. One ball and two strikes. So now here's Anderson in the third inning, ready to make his 60th pitch. He's not going to do that and make 180 pitches. One and two. Red Ready looks at the runners and the pitch, fastball comebacker. Anderson has it, fires to first, and that's the inning. But not before three hits and a walk. The big play. That dribble single that found the home on the right side of the infield. Couldn't play by Utley. And at the end of two and a half, it's three to one, Giants. There they are, Damon and Pythias. Uh, one of them missing some front teeth. So I assume he's a little bit younger. A great double play combination here at the ballpark. All right, bottom of the third. Giants come up with three, take a three to one lead. And PB's first pitch, a little low. Brett Anderson starting it off. The big thing about Anderson now, he's made 60 pitches in three innings. Peavy's next one swung on and missed. One ball and one strike. Peavy has allowed a double and a single. He is one strike out. The 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. Anderson fouls it back. One and two the count. Anderson with the bat. He has two hits. Might surprise you. He has a a double and three runs batted in. And ground ball up the middle. Over to get it. Second baseman Tomlinson. And we have one away. So Jake Peavy. 
the Creek and Cherokee blood going through his veins. We were talking a little while ago about the fact he has a couple of interesting tattoos. Certainly the second one, Hoka Hay. It's an Indian saying that could be interpreted as live life to the fullest. And it was used going into battle. And one interpretation was, if today is my day to die, I've still had a great life. Jake Reddy delivers and the first pitch Rollins fouls away. Jimmy single to center took second on a long fly ball by Utley and rode home on the two out double by Justin Turner. Oh and one. Rollins with 13 home runs they do not load up the right side. Most recently they load up the side whichever side he elected to hit. So they load up the right side when he was hitting left handed and the other way around when he hit right handed. Not now. One ball one strike one out Rollins takes off the plate ball two two and one. Jake Peavy with a four and six record but he is seven and one in his career at Dodger Stadium 14 and three overall. Two one pitch just missed the outside corner three and one. Lounge trying to get aboard, make something happen. Peavy up on top, looks down the barrel to get a sign from Buster Posey. And the 3 1 pitch swung on, fly ball into right center. The outfielders converge, and it will be Blanco as Bird kneels and makes sure he has plenty of room. So two out here in the third Utley. inning. And Chase Utley coming up. Utley hit one just about to the edge of the grass in dead center. It was caught out there by Gregor Blanco, but it was deep enough for Rollins to advance to second and then come home on the double by Justin Turner. Chase 0 for 1, hitting 211. PB starts him, flips it 91 mile an hour fastball in there. 0 and 1 the count to Chase Utley. Dodgers minus Howie Kendrick, now minus KK Hernandez. Strike one pitch, pulled just foul outside of first down the line. It is a long year. I've mentioned this before. Walter Olston, a remarkable manager, had one misconception. He didn't believe, he couldn't believe his first year in the big leagues that 23 year olds in the best of shape could tire. Now he found out. Strike two pitch is low and inside. It was one thing in the old days you played in the East. You'd go as far west as St. Louis. You might play double headers occasionally on Sunday, but invariably you had Monday off. You had 154 games. And for instance, the New York Giants and the Brooklyn Dodgers, it seemed like they were always playing each other. 22 games. The one two pitch is in there. Strike three called. So Utley is caught looking down go the Dodgers seven in a row retired now by Jake Peavy and at the end of three Giants three Dodgers one.
Brought to you by the 2015 Jeep Cherokee. With an EPA estimated 31 highway MPG, it's the perfect choice. Visit Jeep.com today. We go to the fourth inning, 3-1 to one in favor of the Giants. Red Anderson, a tough luck pitcher right now, down by a couple. Red having made 60 pitches. Tomlinson going to be charged with a strike. Oh, and won the county, Kelby. Tomorrow night, Madison Bumgarner and Zach Granke. Little roller foul. And then the concluding game, Mike Leak and Clayton Kershaw. Do you know the player that has hit a home run against both Kershaw and Granke? Member of the Giants. Well, you're right, if you said Madison Bumgarner. Yep. Talking to Hunter Pence. One ball and two strikes. Pence looks like he's in motion even when he's quietly draped over the railing. Love to watch him play. Miss watching him play. I'm sure Dodger pitchers don't miss watching him play. Two and two. Off speed. Tomlinson followed by Gregor Blanco and then Jake Peavy. There you can see 34 pitches made in the third inning. That's the inning with that little ground ball in the hole on the right side produced two runs two big runs and the difference in the game much to the frustration of Chase Utley not to mention Don Manning. Three and two. Chopper wide a third gets on by Turner that blocked it out for Rollins and it's into left field. So when Turner went wide and tried to wave at the ball I think for the split second Rollins lost it as Turner passed across his vision right about off his glove and deflected it as well. So we'll wait for the scoring. Tomlinson aboard and that'll bring up Gregor Blanco. Blanco had a single to Rollins. He beat the throw ahead first. Giants coming into this game had made 59 errors. The Dodgers coming into this game had made 55 errors. So there's always so much talk about pitching no hitters or power home runs. But boy the key to a ball club success always defense and that's going to be a base hit. Slow curveball for a strike. Buster Posey and others enjoying a moment in the dugout. Oh, and one down and away. If you've been following the series, you know that the Dodgers here at home have split six with the Giants. They don't even want to think about going to San Francisco and playing four because they're 0 and six at AT&T Park. Ball two. As far as the Dodgers are concerned. Sorry, wrong number. AT&T. Three to one, favor of the Giants. We're in the fourth inning. Two balls and one strike to count. Blanco, infield single, swings foul, tips it. Two and two. Blanco looking to Roberto Kelly, although not much he can get when you have two strikes. 
Meanwhile over at first Kelby Tomlinson. Draws a throw. We were talking about uh, Blanco's father. He was an insurance salesman. Now he owns a taxi company. In Venezuela. Two and two. Blanco rolls it up the middle, smothered by Utley to Rollins, who laid it first. Oh, what a play that was. Jay's Utley making a good feed to Jimmy Rollins for the force play. The Blanco gets into the force, and the battle will be Jake Peavy. That's worth another look. There's Utley. That is really tough to do. It's one thing to toss the ball with your bare hand. Try to toss it with your glove and it was a good throw although it was a little high and Rollins was hit straight up by Tomlinson. Now Peavy looking to bunt instead of throw to first. Blanco is a good base runner. And there he goes. Full swing and a miss. The throw on the wrong side of the bag. And whoa, he came off. The throw was on the shortstop side. Blanco goes in there and apparently safe and then couldn't hang on. Ron Woldis now on the phone. Do we ask for a review or not? Blanco trying to reach back. With his hand. There he slides by. Now watch. Trying to keep the hand on. Boy, who could tell? Take another angle. Here he comes. Well, that's when he came off. So that's, uh, what do they say? Proof positive. So Blanco back in the dugout, two down, three to one, favor the Giants. Check swing on PB, and that's the inning. <laughs> So no runs a hit, no one left, and at the end of uh, three and a half innings, Giants three, Dodgers one. Participated in a ceremonial first pitch and presented a check to the L.A. Dodgers Foundation to purchase more than 1,500 baseball mitts that kids in the Dodger RBI program will receive in the 2016 season. As a youngster, Dodger outfielder Carl Crawford played in the RBI program in Houston. Members of the Masons donate money through their lodges for the Masons for Mitts campaign. So to learn more, visit masonsformitts.org slash hashtag Los Angeles. Remember when you were little? You never said glove. It was always, where's my mitt? Adrian Gonzalez, Justin Turner, Andre Ethier, 
and a strike. There was a time and it was not that many years ago where the players would put their gloves at the position. If you were in center field you'd you just drop it on the grass. If you were an infielder you'd back off and drop it on the grass. And some uh, some ball players would not just drop the glove they would actually point it to a certain area. Now that sounds goofy but they actually did that. They would make sure the fingers let's say were pointing towards left center or right center or whatever they were thinking about. Yeah. Oh and two. High fly ball but it appears playable and it is. Aoki. So Gonzalez. 0 for 2 on fly balls the other way. One down and Justin Turner coming up. Number 10, Justin Turner. Turner doubled in a run in the first inning. Ball one. Two and oh the count. I remember one time the Dodgers playing the Houston Astros. I don't know how many years ago it was. But one of the prankster Dodgers found a small snake. Maybe in his own backyard. Maybe it was in Brooklyn. And they were leaving their gloves out on the field. And whoever the player was in going to his position, he put that little snake in the shortstop's glove. Two and one. And that's popped up. Tomlinson, the second baseman. No snake in his glove. Two down. I don't really have to tell you much more, do I? I mean, the fella goes out to Andre take over his position, picks up the glove, goes to put his hand in the glove. Wow. Here's Adrian, fly to center in the first inning, 0 for 1. Three runs, six hits for the Giants, one run, two hits for the Dodgers. The base hit. That scored two runs was just a little squirter out of a hose dribbling into the hole on the right side. Utley, who was way up the middle, and Marlon Bird wound up with a single on the infield and two runs batted in. And that's the difference. Right. One and one. 31 year old Jay Peavy. Pitching on memory on so many successes and doing a great job so far. One and two. <laughs> Waiting on deck, hitting behind Ethier, Carl Crawford. Two out, base is empty. Fastball. Brandon Belt hangs it. Peavy picks it off on the run, and that's the inning. So all of a sudden, Peavy has retired the side three consecutive innings. He's retired 10 in a row since Turner doubled in the Dodger run, and he walks off leaving three to one.
14. Dodgers and Rockies pick up your Eric Gagne pin, number seven, in the Cy Young Pin Collector Series presented by 76. For more information, visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. Oh, my. Isn't that incredible? I would probably have to ask her how to do what she's doing. That's a strike to Nori Aoki. That's what it is. She's checking the latest stock brokerage house. Didn't do well today. Yeah, if you know a child, I know some of my younger grandchildren, they know so much more than I do. Of course, I don't have to qualify by saying some of my grandchildren. The world is full of people who know so much more than I do. Nori Aoki grounded out, walked, scored a run, a good comeback play by Anderson. One away in the fifth inning, and Matt Duffy coming up. Third baseman, Matt Duffy. Giants three, Dodgers one. I was talking earlier about the rivalry between the Giants and the Dodgers. One thing that has cooled off a little bit. In the old days, you were a ball player. You signed to go with the Giants, or you signed to go with the Dodgers. And you'd start off in a lower classification. And you would play against each other as you worked his way up through all the minor league teams and all the systems. Somewhere along the line, there had to be a rhubarb. There had to be something that involved you and the other fella. Eventually, you both arrive in the big leagues, one with the Giants, one with the Dodgers. And you have a good memory, as all the players have. And immediately it picks up where you left off in the minor leagues. I don't know about Madison Bumgarner and his emotions in the minors, but you know how he gets upset at certain hitters if they show some kind of delight or frustration. And if they've not been around a while, Bumgarner takes offense. Remember, he got angry at Puig when he hit a home run. I think he got angry at Alex Guerrero. Guerrero, I think, popped up a ball, slammed his bat down. And Bumgarner came down as if to say, hey, you're not good enough to do that. And uh, he's done it a few times. Uh, that's a reflection on the way it used to be. Maybe it's better off. Lack of injury. There were so many knockdowns, collisions. Mm. Of course, the money is different, too. When I started the first year play, I got $5,000. First year player this year gets over five hundred thousand dollars. Brandon Belts had a big night, doubled in the first inning and single to drive in a run in the third. Clayton Kershaw will be facing him tomorrow night. Uh, excuse me, game three tomorrow night, Bumgarner and Granky. For the Dodgers, I'm sure they come into this series. Anderson is a good pitcher. And they don't feel like it's the end of the world if they lose. They'll be two and a half in front, and they have Granky and Kershaw. We'll see. Fastball and a nice chopper. So an easy inning, which is exactly what Brett Anderson needed. And we're going to the bottom of the fifth inning. Three to one, Giants.
Toyota dealers. Now at Toyota's annual clearance event, get amazing deals on every new Toyota. And by Flex Alert. This summer, the power is in your hands. FlexAlert.org. Three to one in favor of the Giants. Jake Peavy takes his ball club into the bottom of the fifth inning. The Dodgers will have Carl Crawford, Yasmani Grandal, and Jock Peterson. Dodgers with two hits and one run. Both hits came in the first inning and produced the run. Foul back. 0 oh and 1. If Buster Posey gets it. Right off the top of the helmet. Wow. What oh, a beating they take back there. Hmm. Yeah. Shake that head at least. Oh and one. Oh and two. Crawford grounded out in the second inning. Peavy has retired 10 in a row since Turner's double in the first inning. Fast ball hit in the air to shallow left. It is going to drop. Aoki will pick it up. So Crawford kind of stiff armed that thing and just pushed it into left field for a base hit. So that breaks the string at 10 and brings up Yasmani Grandall. Grandall is really struggling, but you can understand not just the the concussion that he had. Remember the foul ball that hit him on the left shoulder? That has really wrecked his good portion of the year. After all his good work. In the Dodger bullpen now Pedro Baez begins to loosen up. Dodger certainly thinking hitter for Anderson down three to one. Grandall is 0 for his last 19 and one for his last 29 and it all started after a foul ball got him on that left shoulder. One ball and no strikes. Jock Peterson on deck. There goes Crawford. The pitch is low. The throw gets off the glove of Crawford. I think if Crawford catches that ball, he might very well have gotten me out. The so Crawford out to talk to Phoebe. Posey, meanwhile, made a good play. And actually, Crawford never touched the ball. When you look at slow motion, the throw hit Crawford's chest. Bounced up, bounced away. Crawford trying very hard to block the bag. Couldn't come up with it. So Crawford steals second. 2 and 0 oh, the count to Yasmani Grandal. And Jock Peterson on deck. Good pitch. Two and one. Nobody out. Bottom of the fifth. Three one Giants. Ground foul. Two and two. We mentioned earlier about Brandon Crawford who will be hitting third when the Giants come up in the sixth came into the game hitting 412 against the Dodgers. You know the number one hitter to pile up a tremendous batting average against the Dodgers that's foul back. Well it'd be a pretty good guess between Giants and Dodgers it would be Willie Mays. When the Dodgers and Giants came out here in 1958, played in the Coliseum and Seal Stadium in San Francisco, all Mays did that year 
was hit 483 against the Dodgers. Two and two. Big chopper belt stays with it. Overhands to Phoebe. So the stolen base comes in handy instead of one out and a runner at first. You have one out and a runner at third. Now will it be Jock Peterson? So Peterson coming up with a runner at third and one out. Alex Guerrero comes out on deck to bat for Anderson. Peterson a towering pop fly in the second inning. By the way for Jake Peavy a stolen base is all part of his repertoire. He has allowed a hundred and seventy two stolen bases in his career. That's ninth among active pitchers. And foul ball all in one. As we always do with a runner at third, it's interesting to point out JTV does not have a wild pitch. For the giant rotation outside of Bumgarner, it has been a struggle. Bumgarner's great 116. The rest of the staff is 4 and 11. Oh and one. Fastball, a little low. The Bum Garner tomorrow night. Boy, that'll be a battle. Bum Garner and Granky. One ball, one strike, one out. Among other things, Bum Garner brings to the dance. He has five home runs. Three to one, favor of the Giants, bottom of the fifth. Crawford at third, one out. Check swing, that's a strike. One and two. By the way, PD has struck out two. Got Grandall in the second inning looking, and Utley looking in the third. Waiting on deck, pinch hitter Alex Guerrero. One and two, and Anderson about ready to come out. Time. Jock hitting 211, 23 home runs, 47 runs batted in. One and two. Two and two. Trying to read your mind. Jake Peavy has given up seven home runs. Took a change just a little off the fastball and it got the outside corner, although Jock didn't argue, he just muttered ball. The so Peterson is rung up, strikeout number three. Take a look. No matter how we look at it, they played on Farm Marty Foster, called it a strike. So a frustrated Peterson. Joining the club of all hitters who feel that they've been jobbed on a bad call by an umpire. So here now is Alex Guerrero trying to pick up Crawford from third with two out. Slider down and away. Guerrero chases. Oh, and one. So for Brent Anderson he's going to think about that little ground ball hit by Marlon Bird in the third inning which has him come out after 87 pitches. 
That was really a tough break. Slider off the plate one and one. PV up to 74 pitches. Crawford a third two out. Three to one Giants. Fastball. One and two. Guerrero coming up hitting 230. But he has 11 home runs, 32 runs batted in. Hard enough to play and very tough to play when you don't play. He has nine hits and 40 at bats. Three home runs. One and two. And got him. So a fastball down goes Guerrero. The Dodgers leave Crawford at third. And at the end of five, Giants three, Dodgers one. In the Coliseum, and we had almost 83,000 people to see that game. In the course of the game, Sandy Koufax struck out 18. He won the game five to two, thanks to a ninth inning three-run home run by Wally Moon. That was the year that Sandy won 18 and struck out 269. Really, the beginning of his great career. Let's go back to this one. Catcher Buster Well, talking about Sandy, 18 strikeouts, 18 wins. Jake Peavy made 18 pitches in the fifth inning. Pedro Baez will now pick up for Brett Anderson, and he'll be facing Buster Posey, Marlon Bird, and Brandon Crawford. Posey flied to left and in the third inning popped up to Gonzalez with the bases loaded. And that gets through the legs of Randolph for ball one. Posey one for two in the past against Baez. Now behind two balls and no strikes on a 99 mile an hour fastball. Buster after taking a pretty good lick in the helmet on the foul ball. 
Now asked to produce with the bat. Sixth inning, three to one, San Francisco. Fouled away. Two and one. So Brett Anderson gave it a good shot. That little ground ball single on the right side, difference in the game. Two runs scored on it. And it chased Brett after five innings. Two and one. Three and one. Waiting on deck, hitting behind Posey, the newer giant, Marlon Bird. It was Bird who hit that little ground ball into the hole that meant two runs and the difference in the game. Chase Utley tried to come from almost behind second base, couldn't do it. Dodgers struggling offensively tonight and for that matter really all year. Earlier in the year a lot of home runs. There's still 23 games above 500 at home. And that's banged into center for a base hit. For the Giants. They are doing what any team would like to do. They're getting a leadoff man on. They had Blanco lead off the third. They had Tomlinson lead off the fourth. And now they have Posey lead off in the sixth. Buster visiting with Adrian Gonzalez. And here's Marlon Bird. Hit back to the box. Right hand batter Utley. Playing over to his right. Maybe he's come back a couple of steps now. But he was in a little bit more to his right. When Bird came up with that ground ball. To his left. Utley tried to go back and get it. Couldn't do it. And two runs scored. A little thing that means so much. We'll show it to you after a pitch. And ball one. Here's the play. Little ground ball. Utley running, running to catch up. Slides. Can't make the play. Two runs scored. Brought in by Aoki and Tomlinson. And that's a difference. Three to one Giants were in the sixth. High pop fly. Big league pop fly. And it's Utley. The bird pops it up. He goes one for three. Shortstop, Brandon Crawford. And here's Brandon Crawford, who came into the game hitting 412. Grounded out twice. 412 in 12 games plus tonight. And tonight they've quieted him. He grounded his second and hit back to the box. Early we mentioned those fellows on the Giants who had big years against the Dodgers. Willie Mays, 483. Barry Bonds in 2004 hit 436. And Mays, the year before, still in New York, Willie hit 429 when the Giants played in Ebbets Field and the Polar Grounds. No balls and one strike to Brandon Crawford. Posey short lead at first. One ball and one strike. Casey wonder about Posey. He does have two stolen bases. He's two for two.
One ball and one strike. And ball two, two and one. Both teams, the Giants and Dodgers, have not done a lot since the All Star break. The Giants are 23 and 18. The Dodgers are 21 and 18. That's fouled away. But Don Mattingly, who was a marvelous hitter in his playing days, got to be tough to watch so many hitters come walking back to the dugout. However, his consolation, they're three and a half games in front. One out, sixth inning. And a high and playable fly ball. Jock Peterson calling. Two down in the sixth inning. Kelby Tomlinson rounded to short and singled. Ground ball in the fourth inning went off Justin Turner's glove. And that was the beginning. Dodgers wiggled off the hook, however. They'll be doing well in place of Joe Panic. Panic was hitting 309, had played in 97 games before hurting his back. But they say Panic will be back about a week. Meanwhile, Kelby doing a good job for Buster Posey and for his skipper, Bruce Boshi. And a foul ball out of play. On one. Kelby Tomlinson from a little town in Oklahoma, Elgin, Oklahoma. That's near the Fort Sill Army Base. How small is it? Elgin got its first traffic light last year. That's small. When you ask Kelby about it, he said, Well, there's a grocery store, a Dollar General, a Family Dollar, a Sonic. And a McDonald's. And that's it. And the proud possessor of a red light. One and one. One and two. Off speed. Off speed for Baez, who throws up to 99. Closest team to Elgin would be the Texas Rangers. They're about Three and a half hours away. One ball and two strikes. Two and two. Baez picking up for Brett Anderson who went five. Brett charged with the three runs. Two and two. So down goes Tomlinson. Lead off single by Posey but nothing else. And after five and a half innings it's still Giants three Dodgers one.
And fans will receive a bobblehead of two-time Silver Slugger Award winner Fernando Valenzuela. Presented by State Farm. For tickets, go to Dodgers.com slash promotion. Yep, Fernando is hitting. Oh, well. Little Darling is awakened. Finds out that the Giants are leading 3-1. to one. Or In the early days of her life, she is thinking about a comeback. Meanwhile, Dad's pretty proud, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Jimmy Rollins, Chase Utley, Adrian Gonzalez. Bottom of the sixth inning, and Jake Peavy still out there. He's allowed just three hits, one run, and a strike on one. Peavy has struck out four and has not walked anybody. And promptly sounded like a broken bat. It's going to be a dunker in the right field. So Rollins bloops one into right for a leadoff base hit, and the batter Chase Utley. Boy, those two made a little music around second base. Remember that play when Utley, flashing on a ground ball up the middle, gets his glove on it and backhands the ball out of the glove to Rollins for a force play. I mean, it's tough enough to toss the ball, to shovel it out of your glove, but to backhand and flip it and get it to your shortstop, that was a wonderful play. Utley, meanwhile, fly deep to center in the first inning. Rollins went to second and scored later on. Then last time up, Chase was called out on strikes. Left-hander Luis Avilan gets up in the Dodger bullpen. And ball one to chase. Avilon getting ready, although Utley is the number two hitter. So it's not as if he's getting ready after an out. He's got plenty of time down there. One ball and no strikes. Rollins off the bag. One and one. Utley checking with Ron Renicky. Jimmy Rollins has nine stolen bases. He's been caught seven times. Just away, ball two. Well, two and one is a manager's count. That's when you start thinking about something like hit and run. Down by two, trying to shake up his ball club. We'll see if Mattingly puts hit and run on. Rollins looking across the field at Renicky for the moment. Well, he knows if there is a play on by now. Three runs, seven hits for the Giants. One run, four hits for the Dodgers. Utley at the plate. Gonzalez on deck. Rollins at first. Two balls, one strike. He's not going on ball three. So they didn't run him hit and run. Question now is will they run him three and one. Again the idea three and one you're not obligated to swing at ball four. Utley's had a great August. He hit three thirty three in the month. The Posey at the ready. Big pitch here. Again, we'll watch Rollins. He increased his lead a little bit. He's not gone. 
And a high fly ball to straightaway center. Gregor Blanco. So Utley can't move him along. And the batter now Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzalez twice has gone the other way. Lined out the left field. Flied out the left field. Hitting 283. Adrian hitches the way that uh, PV pitches. So Gonzalez apparently taking pitches going the other way. The first time he hit it hard. But he's 0 for 2. Hitting back of him, Justin Turner. Dodgers trying to come from behind, trying to add to a three and a half game lead. Giants trying to cut it to two and a half with Bumgarner going tomorrow night. Strike. Oh, and one. Bumgarner and Granky tomorrow night. Bumgarner, by the way, is 16 and 6. Granky is 14 and 3. Josh Osich, a left hander, gets up now in the giant bullpen. So two left handers, Osich. And Avilan. All in one to Adrian. That was pretty close. Peavy is due to bat second when the Giants hit in the seventh inning. So for Boshi, he might very well be thinking of taking Jake out. Oh, and one. Rollins has now twice increased his lead, and each time Peavy goes over there. Probably at direction of Buster Posey. Posey, meanwhile, looked quickly over to Boshi. His manager was a longtime catcher. Oh, and one. Off speed, outside, one ball, one strike. Way outside. Two and one. Matt Duffy is way over to his left. Almost in the shortstop hole. Crawford is almost behind second base. Boshi does not load up one side or the other as we have seen throughout the game. Two and one. Another hit and run possibility. No run and a foul ball. Two and two. Dodgers got a run in the first inning. Rollins single took second on Utley's long fly ball. And Jimmy scored on a double by Turner. And the Giants got three in the third inning. An infield single for Blanco. Peavy a force play. But Aoki walked. Duffy singled to load the bases. Belt singled in a run. And then Marlon Bird's little ground ball for two. Two and two to Adrian. And Rollins goes on a high drive into deep right center. She is a way out and gone. And we have a tied up game. Adrian 
Gonzalez hits his 25th home run. He now has 77 runs batted in. Jake Creedy, who pitched so well, has given up his eighth home run. And we're back even 3-3. Justin Turner will be coming up. So Peavy did a great job and now has finally been caught here in the sixth. Turner, a fly ball down the right field line, starting to slice foul back into the crowd. For Adrian Gonzalez, his last home run was on the 15th against Cincinnati. Just about no doubt, as soon as he made contact, it had that sound and it jumped off the bat. Blanco watching it go back in about six rows. So it's three runs, seven hits for the Giants, three runs, five hits for the Dodgers. And ball one. Justin Turner doubled in a run in the first inning, but he's been struggling for the last two weeks. Last two weeks, Justin hitting just 109. And it's always the way in a lineup. Somebody is going up and somebody's coming down. Turner's coming down. And right behind him, Andre Ethier is now the National League's leading hitter in August. Andre's hitting 377. Two and one. Fastball popped up. Peavy is there, but it'll be the third baseman, Matt Duffy. Second out. It was interesting in the sixth inning. Rollins led off with a single. He kept expecting hit and run or run and hit. And it didn't happen with Utley. And with Gonzalez, where Rollins was increasing his lead with Utley, Rollins actually shortened his lead and took off running when Gonzalez hit it out. So it's as if Jimmy was trying to fool him by shortening the lead. And then Gonzalez made it easy to jog home. Ball one. Andre is fly to center and grounded to first baseman Brandon Belt. 3-3 three, three in the sixth. Two and oh. When the Giants come up in the seventh inning, they have Blanco a left hand batter. Then a hitter for Peavy and Aoki, another left hand batter. So that's why Avalon is getting ready. 2 0. Oh. Time. PB getting close to 100. This will be his 95th pitch. Off speed, dropped it in for a strike. Two and one. PB started off, made 20 pitches in the first inning, but then settled down. Brett Anderson in the third inning had to make 34 pitches and he had made 87 by the time he left after five. So Peavy behind three and one. And a fly ball down the right field line. Running on the track is Bird, reaches up and can't get it. It's over the wall for a home run. And the Dodgers lead four to three. So Bruce Boshi now heading for the home plate umpire. It might very well be a double switch. So Marlon Bird running on the track, running right to the gate, and just missed it. For PB, no consolation. 
And for Bird, a glove full of frustration. Bo she's still talking to the plate umpire, Marty Foster, before going to the mound. They're going to the bullpen, where the Giants will make the change. Oshie, who had been throwing down there, so we'll be back after JTV leaves. And Adrian comes up and hits a two run home run, followed by one that is so close to being caught. How close? That close. But it cleared the fence into the bullpen. It goes. And suddenly the Dodgers enjoying a four to three lead, scoring three times here in the sixth inning. So Jake Peavy comes out, annoyed, frustrated, downcast. Joe Osich. A left hander comes in to face Carl Crawford. Osage in his 20th game, a 1 0 record. One ball and one strike. Osage. Trying to restore order. Carl Crawford trying to extend the inning with Grandall on deck. Peavy winds up giving up two home runs tonight and nine this year. Ground ball hard. Crawford at the other end of it. Guns the throw, and that's it. So it was a big inning for the Dodgers. For five innings, they struggled with one run on the board. And then Adrian Gonzalez got a fastball knee high and hit it for a home run to tie up the game. And then of all the dramatic home run, towering fly ball, Marlon Bird leaping up against the gate, six inches short, and the Dodgers wind up at the end of six, leading four to three.
Dodger Baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Choose Nissan.com. And by DraftKings. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com. Use promo code BLUECREW for free entry. Four to three in favor of the Dodgers. That paint scraper hit by Andre Ethier to give them the lead. So now Luis Avilan will try to protect it. And Pedro Baez has a chance to pick up a win. Four runs, six hits for the Dodgers. Three runs, seven hits for the Giants. Remember, they scored all three runs back in the third inning, and they have not hit at all. Gregor Blanco, an infield single, and hit into a force play. He'll start it off. And a strike. If you're keeping score, Osich goes into Tomlinson's spot. Hey, Ray Adrenaza, he's the leadoff man. Adrenaza batting just 177. He's waiting on deck behind Blanco. And that's pulled foul down the line. 0 oh, and 2 the count. Adrianza on deck, by the way, is a switch hitter. There he is. O oh, and 2. Drop that breaking ball low. Avilan from Caracas. He pitches exceptionally well at night. Two and two. So Blanco facing another fellow Venezuelan in Luis Avilan. Fastball. Great pitch, great location. And Blanco strikes out. One out in the seventh. Mm. Second baseman, number one, Ehire Adrianza. So with one away, here's Adrianza. Batting in the number nine slot. Osich is in Tomlinson's spot. Two years ago, A. Ray came up, got his first major league hit against the Dodgers in September. Remember last year, Giants wound up the wild card and won it all. Adriana is from Venezuela. His first name, Ere, is E H I R E. Ere. And a little pop fly, Utley calling. Go to now. A reminder Thursday, an all new backstage Dodgers, Carl Crawford, shares his life story of growing up in Houston. Plus, Andre Ethier visits the legendary bat company, Louisville Slugger. So don't miss Backstage Dodgers Thursday at 5.30 on Sportsnet L.A. Two down, seventh inning. And Aoki checking in, grounded out, walked, scored a run. 
hit back to the box. And a hopper hard but right it up. So a quick inning and a nice inning for Luis Avilan. And we're going to the bottom of the seventh inning. Dodgers four, Giants three. Bottom of the seventh inning, four to three in favor of the Dodgers. Big swing and a miss from Grandall, who has struck out and grounded out. 0 for 2. By the way, the Giants have acquired an outfielder without Pence and without Pagan. They're hurting in that area. So they've just acquired outfielder Alejandro de Aza, a left hand hitter. From the Boston Red Sox. In the Dodger bullpen, Juan Nicasio is heating up. One and two, the count to Grandall. So it's been Anderson, Baez, Avilan, and Nicasio getting ready. PV and Osage for the Giants. Fly ball to straight away in shallow center. One away. And that'll bring up Jock Peterson. By the way, Jake Peavy made 97 pitches while he was in there. Fred Anderson made 87. The pitchers of record right now would be Baez and Peavy. And Austin Barnes coming out of the Dodger dugout. He's just been called up. Barnes along with uh, Joel Peralta and pitcher Mike Bolsinger. Barnes a you would say third string catcher behind Grandall and Ellis. Jock Peterson popped up called out on strikes. One of the few times we have seen Jock show any frustration after being called out on what he thought was a pitch that was outside the strike zone. One ball and no strikes. Ground ball by the diving Adrianza. Though Jock Peterson comes up with a base hit to go one for three. The 
Dodgers four runs, seven hits. Giants three runs, seven hits. And here comes Austin Barnes, and also here comes Bruce Boshi. So for Boshi, he saw his club come from behind one nothing to lead three to one. But the Giants really, after that one lucky little ground ball, have not done any hitting at all. Since the third inning, the Giants have two singles. We'll be right back. On MLB.TV Premium. Watch every out of market game live on more than 400 supported devices, real time highlights, live look ins, and more. Visit MLB.TV today. It's hitting for the Dodgers, number 65, Austin Barnes. Austin Barnes coming up, facing Hunter Strickland. Hunter really impressed last year, and he continues to do so. With an earned run average of two and facing the young catcher Austin Barnes just called up from Oklahoma City. Peterson at first one out in the seventh. Four three Dodgers. Hunter Strickland out of Thomason Georgia. Throws very, very hard. Fouled away. If you're going to be sitting in the dugout and then come up to hit, he is really one tough hombre. Barnes just fouling off a 96 mile an hour pitch. Austin, meanwhile, is a local boy from Riverside, lives in Corona, went to Arizona State, and was a ninth round pick by the Marlins. His uncle, Mike Gallego, played in the big leagues for 13 years. Oh, and two. Hunter Strickland has a great imagination. July the 4th last year. He entered a double A Richmond game in front of a capacity crowd wearing an American flag vest. Promptly retired the side in order got a standing ovation. So he takes care of young Barnes as we said a tough task to come up against a guy like Strickland. Two down, Jimmy Rollins single to center, scored a run, fly to center, single to right, and scored a run ahead of the home run by Adrian Gonzalez. Yeah. 
And ball one. Rollins hitting 221. Oh, they had him picked off, but the throw was a little high, and Peterson able to scamper back. Strickland, by striking out Barnes, has struck out 43 batters in 40 innings. Though he's averaging a little more than nine strikeouts per nine innings. Left handers hitting 184 against him. I remember him last year. Wow. Hunter Strickland. One ball and one strike. When the Giants come up in the eighth inning, Matt Duffy, Brandon Belt, and Buster Posey. Well, the Dodgers are dealing as well. Foul ball. We just told you the Giants have acquired outfielder Alejandro Diaz from the Red Sox, a left handed batter. The Dodgers now have picked up outfielder Justin Ruggiano from Seattle. One and two the count. Peterson taking a cautious lead doesn't go and the pitch foul back. Foul back a 99 mile an hour fastball. Strickland is six feet four. 220 pounder. Born in September. In one of the great dodgy years of 1988. Two balls, two strikes. First save that Trickland got last year was right here at Dodger Stadium. He's a chip off the old block. Hunter's father played in the Tigers organization. Two and two. Dodgers got a run in the first inning and the Giants got three in the third and it stayed that way until the sixth home run by Gonzalez with a man aboard home run by Ethier and it's four three Dodgers. Big struggle yet ahead. Round ball nice pick by Belt. Mm. So no runs a hit a man left and at the end of seven four to three Dodgers.
four to three score. Giants had Brandon Bell double in the first inning, but more importantly, they had him single in a run in the third inning. Adrian Gonzalez hit a two run home run that tied up the game 3 3. Andre Ethier hit a home run just over the glove of Marlon Bird, just over the gate in right field, and the Dodgers lead 4 to 3. Juan Nicasio will now pick up for the Dodgers. So Anderson made 87 pitches. Baez worked hard, made 18 pitches. Avilon breezed by making only nine. And here is Nicasio. He'll be pitching to the heart of the giant lineup. That means Duffy, Belt, and then Posey. As far as one run games, and again, the Giants have been struggling, losing series on the road. At home, the Giants are eight and four in one run games. But on the road, the Giants are 8 and 14. So they're in for another tough one run game. Bruce Boshi trying somehow to keep a wounded club close in the race. Playing without Hunter Punts, Angel Pagan, Joe Panic, and ball one. Matt Duffy grounded a short, single to right, scored a run, and grounded out. Fastball strike. So Nicasio hits 96. We saw Baez hit 99. Big Strickland lives in that uptown neighborhood, throwing 96 and higher. One and one. A little low and away, two and one to count to Matt Duffy. Two and one. Way off the plate, three and one. That's ball four. So the tying run is aboard with Belt, Posey, and Bird coming up. We're talking about nine, the Giants Brandon in one Bell. run games as J.P. Howell loosens up. The Dodgers in one run games, they're all right at home. They're 11 and 6. One run games on the road. Dodgers are 6 and 15. Brandon Belt double to right, single to center, grounded out, two for three. Matt Duffy over there at first base runs well. In fact, he's perfect seven for seven in stolen bases. So they have a couple of ways to operate now. Posey on deck. Foul ball. Boy, Duffy really took a, a jumping lead to the right on that pitch. Belt and Duffy checking with Roberto Kelly. J.P. Howell getting ready. But you don't have a left-hand hitter until Brandon Crawford. 0-1. Belt a very aggressive hitter. But Nicasio has taken the aggression out of him. One for 13. Belt, even though he is a left-handed batter, has done a great bit of work against left-hand pitching.
sixty two home runs in his young career. So he's a power to deal with. Oh and two. Four runs seven hits for the Dodgers three runs seven hits for the Giants and we're in the eighth inning. And foul ball that was up the protective fencing that could have done some damage. Mm. Tim Lincecum very close. Thank goodness for the knobbing but even that look at the bend in it. One and two. Foul the other way. So the duel continues. Nicasio has gotten belt out most of the time. Tying run at first and Duffy waiting on deck. Buster Posey, who has flied out, popped up with the bases loaded and led off with a single last time up. One ball and two strikes. Got him. So Belt still can't face Nicasio. He's one for 14 against him as he walks away. Just a good fastball to blow him down. So one out, and now Buster Posey. Posey's already had a huge at bat. That was in the third inning. Giants had the bases loaded. One out, and he popped the ball up to Gonzalez, infield fly rule. That was a big chance for Buster to make an impression in the game. Foul back, zero oh and one. Buster Posey is five for eleven. Including a double and a home run against Nicasio. So that adds up to a 455 batting average. We'll see what all that means. No balls, one strike. Oh, and two. Each team picking up an outfielder tonight. Ruggiano coming to the Dodgers. Diazza coming to the Giants. Each outfielder has hit 45 home runs in his career. No balls and two strikes to Buster Posey. Hitting 317. 22 doubles, 16 home runs. That was 98 miles an hour, and it actually had a little late movement on it. It just seemed to jump away. What a pitch. One ball and two strikes. going to be hit the right field but he here is going to be able to make the catch and back to first goes Duffy 
So Posey fly ball to right field. He goes one for four. And with two out, Duffy now a threat to steal as Marlon Bird checks in. Wasn't it very hard? He had to go up on his toes to hit it. And then Ethia just did get the glove on the ball. Yeah, you can read the language of Nicasio. Boy, that was close. So instead of two on and one out, you have one on and two out. And Marlon Bird. Bird hit back to the box, had that little infield single that meant two runs, and popped up. Bird one for three in the pass against Nicasio. Strike. Down in the Dodger bullpen, J.P. Howell has been warming up, but now joining him, Kenley Jansen. We're in the top of the eighth inning, and it's four to three Dodgers. And there goes the runner, sure enough. Missed at the plate. And Duffy steals second base. That certainly figured down by one and two out. Especially Duffy, who has a very good habit of stealing bases and succeeding. He is eight for eight. There he goes, head down, straight steal in there. Utley unable to hold on to the ball, but it didn't make any difference. 0 oh, and 2 the count to Marlon Bird. So Duffy the tying run at second base. Grandall out to talk to Nicasio. Dodgers win this one. They have to feel pretty good at coming back with Granky and Kershaw. But well, the Giants will be coming back with Bumgarner and Leak. 0 oh, and 2. Foul ball out of play. No balls and two strikes. Marlon Bird, remember, had 11 RBIs in his last four games, and then he got that little single in the hole on the right side that never really left the infield. So he's had 13 runs batted in. In the last five games. Hit a grand slam on the 29th against Michael Waka. The bird up there in a big spot. The manager sweating it out. Tying run at second base. 4-3 Dodgers. Two out in the eighth. Fisted foul. Boy, he ran that thing at 95 right in on the hands. Hmm. Didn't get that around at all on that pitch. Big league fastball. 0 and 2 the count to Marlon Bird. He was recently here when he was playing with the Cincinnati Reds. 0 and 2. Just down and off. Pretty tough pitch. 1 and 2 the count. It's there and down there. Matt Duffy tying run second base two out. Fastball line down into the corner. That'll be for an extra base hit. Duffy will score and we have a 4-4 tie. Well sure it's the Giants and the Dodgers.
Well, Marlon Bird has driven in three runs tonight, 14 runs in his last five games as a Giant. Got a pitch up and flailed it down the line to right. Not much Ethier could do about that. And for Mattingly and Honeycutt, another frustrating moment. And now, not only is the game tied, the Giants have a tiebreaker at second. And Brandon Crawford, they might take the bat right out of his hand. Yep, that's what they're going to do. Didn't figure that they would pitch to Crawford. Now, remember, the pitcher spot is due up, so the young catcher, Andrew Susak, will be batting. Susak, by the way, hitting 225. He has three home runs and 14 runs batted in. Giants led three to one. Dodgers led four to three. Now they're tied up four four. Three and zero, oh, and there's ball four. So in the inning, Duffy opened up with a walk. Belt struck out. Posey flied out. Though they gambled, rolled the dice, and Duffy stole his eighth base without being caught, and then Bird doubles to right. Marlin talking to Bill Hayes. And here goes Rick Honeycutt. Whoops. Started to go. And here he comes. So Andrew Susak, the young catcher, checking in. A big spot for him with two on, two out, and the run in to tie up the game. Susak is a very talented young catcher. They rave about him up north. They figure that. When he is ready, he'll do a lot of catching, and Buster Posey will do a lot of playing at first base. All right, Honeycutt has talked to Nicasio about how the Dodgers want him to face Andrew Susak. 0 for 9 as a pinch hitter, and seven strikeouts. So. He has really struggled coming off the bench. He's one of those kids when he was in eighth grade, he wrote a paper on what he'd been doing in 20 years, and he said he would be playing ball at AT&T Park. Came to be. And a strike off speed pitch. Andrew grew up in Roseville and lives in Carmichael. Grew up as a diehard Giants fan. Went to school at Oregon, Oregon State. Signed with the Giants four years ago, second round pick. 0 oh and 1. Check swing. In the Dodger bullpen, now that the game is tied, Kenley Jansen has stopped. J.P. Howell is joined by Jim Johnson. One ball and one strike. Four four in the eighth. One and two. Susak has been in 49 games. They lost their backup catcher. Hector Sanchez. One and two. Tough inning for Nicasio. This is 29th pitch. And down goes Susak. However, the double by Marlon Bird gets the Giants even. One run, one big hit. And at the end of seven and a half, a 4 4 tie.
info for a chance to be shown in an upcoming broadcast. Brought to you by T-Mobile. 4-4, bottom of the eighth inning. Javier Lopez, one of the most talented left-handers in relief in the league. Want to know, but look at the earned run average, 1.5. Javier lives in Colorado, born in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And I would say since he came to San Francisco, he's the toughest left-hand pitcher against a left-hand hitter in the National League. And the first man he'll get is a left-hand batter, Chase Utley. Interesting, too, on the double by Marlon Byrd. We started talking about it the other day in the Cubs series, and it brings up a point tonight. That's a strike. About the one ball, one strike count. How the league is hitting, oh, better than 340 if it's two and one, and hitting about 160 when it's one and two. Well, Bird's double was on the one and two count. He had been having an average of 143 on that count. And remember, he fouled off two strike pitches and then doubled. So once in a while, it goes the other way. And it's 4 4, bottom of the eighth. Two and one. Utley fly deep to center, struck out, fly to center. Utley is 0 for 15 against Javi Lopez. Shot off his leg, deflected to shortstop. There's nobody there. Utley around first, on his way for second. And a terrible throw gets him in there safely. Oh, my goodness. What a throw by Aoki. They should have gotten him easily. It was a bad gamble for Utley. And he would have been out from me to you. And Aoki just made an awful throw. I'll bet you in 10 chances, Aoki would throw him out 9 out of 10. Watch this. Off the leg, deflected to short, on out into the grass. Utley decides to gamble. Here's Aoki, and look where the ball goes. Wow. So Utley sees he has a chance, takes it, and gets away because of that throw. It obviously just slipped out of the hand of Nori Aoki. Mm -hmm. So the Dodgers get a huge break. There will not be an error, apparently. They're going to call it a double. Wow. All right, Dodgers get a tremendous break. And now here's Gonzalez. Ground ball to Belt. He'll keep the ball. Utley goes to third. And the tiebreaker now 90 feet away. Take another look at Aoki's throw. That had to slip. I mean, you couldn't miss by that much. I mean, that's barely in the neighborhood. And it goes all the way to the mound to Lopez. So the Dodgers get a huge break. They certainly are not going to pitch to Turner. They have Andre Ethier on deck. So they will walk Turner. Andre Ethier is hitting 176 against Lopez. Scott Van Slyke is 0 for 3 and Van Slyke will be coming up. By the way we have a moment the paid attendance tonight 40,851. So the Dodgers now first and third one out. The infield has not settled yet. And now let's see. Bruce Boshi wants to make sure Scott Van Slyke has been announced. 
And he was assured by Marty Foster that Van Slyke has been announced. So he has Sergio Romo, the right hander, throwing in the bullpen. Any kind of a good throw, at least that split second, why Utley would have been out at second base. So instead, Utley is now at third, and the umpires waiting for the change for Romo, and we'll be right back. Dodger Baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Jack in the Box. For a limited time, try the new Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack with melted garlic herb butter. And by the Acura It's That Kind of Summer event. 4-4 four, four tie. Dodgers have runners at first and third. One out, bottom of the eighth inning. Sergio Romo becomes the fifth giant pitcher. P.B. Osic, Strickland, Lopez, and now Romo. The boy from Brawley, who now lives in Phoenix. He was picked by the Giants in the 28th round at a Mesa State College in Colorado. Brandon Crawford comes in to chat with him. Scott Van Slyke, 0 for 3 against Romo. One strikeout. So you have Utley who gambled and got away with it. He's at third. And with one out, they walk Turner. Though Romo and Van Slyke. Romo is 0 and 4 for the year. And a strike. For Romo, you get one slider, you get two sliders, you usually get three sliders. So the Dodgers knowing that looking for it and Ben Slyke took a fastball for a strike. Interesting notes. Oh and one. There's the slider. Romo. Has walked eight while striking out fifty nine. 32 years old who can remember exactly where he sat in Dodger Stadium when he came here as an 11 year old. One and one. Slider two and one. Sergio says I know where the seat is it's right next to the foul pole in left field. Carl Crawford waiting on deck. Two and one. And another slider. So he started him with a fastball and then everything else slider, which of course makes it so tough on any pitcher. Can't fly on one wing. They took Ethier out when Lopez was in. 
They took Lopez out when Ben Slight came up. So three and one to count. Took a lot off that and kept it way in. All right, three and two with one out. We'll watch Turner at first. First and third, one away. Infield is about double play depth, except for Belt, who's in front of the runner. Three and two. Turner holds, and there's a fly ball shallow center. Going out is Crawford. He'll make the catch. Holding on is Utley, and the throw goes to Belt. So Van Slyke pops it up to the shortstop. Paul Crawford coming up. Paul Crawford tonight grounded out, single a left, stole a base, grounded out again. One for three. Four four, bottom of the eighth. The Giants will have the bottom of the lineup, starting with Blanco. In the top of the ninth inning. So we'll see now if Romo stays one slider after another. Fastball. On one. Giants would love to have another left hander come out of the bullpen a veteran left hander who's been with them for so many years and that's Jeremy Affelt. But Jeremy Affelt is on the DL. So they come up one left hander short. Affelt with the Giants since 09. 0 and 1. Pass ball, little roller, routine play for Rianza, and so the Giants get out of the jam. I'll tell you, the most relieved player down there is Nori Aoki as he comes jogging in from left field. So we are heading for the ninth inning in a 4 4 tie. Right now to protect the tie and hope his club can do better in the bottom of the ninth inning. When the Chicago Cubs were here, they were something like 0 for 18 with runners in scoring position. So far in this one game, 
The Giants are four for eight with runners in scoring position, and the Dodgers are one for nine. And thereby hangs the tail as Scott Van Slyke takes over in right field, having batted for Andre Ethier. Gregor Blanco will start it off. Then we have Adrianza batting ninth and Nori Aoki most relieved after the throw that got away. He'll be batting third in the inning. So here's Kenley facing Blanco. And ball one. Gregor Blanco one for three in the past against Jansen. Aoki has never faced Jansen. There's a dunker to left, and it's a base hit for Blanco. So Blanco goes two for four. Number one, Ahiri Adrianza. Blanco doesn't do a lot of running because he's batting eighth in the lineup. So he, but he can still get him when they need him. And in this kind of a game, I have to keep on him. Here's Adrianza. One thing that Jansen has always been is a wonderful pitcher who is weak in stolen bases. In his career, 33 stolen bases and four caught stealing. Blanco, during the year when he's been higher up in the batting order, has stolen 12 out of 16. So the Dodgers really have to worry. And of course, you have the Achilles. Weakness of Jansen. The butt in the air. So Gonzalez makes a catch. Boy, does that change the inning. I mean, just imagine if Adrianza has a lengthy at bat, Blanco steals, and Adrianza gets the bunt down. Instead, Blanco's still there, and Adriana pops it up. So one out and the batter now Aoki with Duffy on deck Bill Hayes talking to Blanco. Aoki grounded out walk scored a run and a couple more ground balls. 0 for 3. Chase Utley of course took the advantage. Took the extra base on the ball off the leg of Javier Lopez and that very poor throw by Aoki. So he has a chance now to make up for that. Yeah, they best watch Blanco for sure. You have Belt on deck and then Posey. A bluff by Blanco. Pretty good bluff. He went a good 20 feet off the bag. Big decision for Boshi. When will he run him? There you go. Breaking ball in the dirt and the throw is safe. Ball got away from Utley. Blanco hurt himself a little bit. So he does what you would expect. Take another look. 
good throw into the runner. I think the throw might have hit him. Awkward slide as well. Yep. All right, Blanco has done what you thought he would do. Try to steal and be successful. So two and one to count to Aoki. So for Jansen, he gets him out, but he can't hold him on. One out, ninth inning, four four. Waiting on deck, Matt Duffy. Two balls and one strike. High fly ball, but playable. Crawford is there. Tagging is Blanco, but he's not going to go anywhere. So Oki can't move him along. The batter now is Matt Duffy with Brandon Belt on deck. Number five, Matt, Duffy. Matt Duffy grounded to short, single to right, and scored on that little ground ball in the hole on the right side hit by Marlon Bird. Grounded out and walked, stole a base, and scored the double on Bird's shot to right field. Though Bird has knocked in three, and two of them belong to Duffy. Kenley Jansen and Matt Duffy. They have not faced each other. Hard throwing Santiago Casilla begins to warm up now in the giant bullpen. And ball one. Brandon Belt who is on deck. Is one for eight against Jansen as Casilla heats up. And ball two. Duffy and Jansen have not faced each other. Duffy becoming a wonderful clutch hitter. He has Blanco at second, two out, four four in the ninth. Fastball. How good has Matt Duffy been for the Giants? Well, with runners in scoring position and two out, as we have now, he has hit 391 for Bruce Boshi. Two and two. Duffy stands six two, and he is a very lean, maybe one seventy, maybe. From Long Beach, went to Long Beach State, and it's a big at bat here. Two and two. Duffy for the year. Ten home runs. Sixty runs batted in. Knocked in sixty and he has scored sixty one. All right. Two and two. Big fastball, so three and two, two down. Blanco at second base, ninth inning in a 4 4 tie. Gregor, I think, hurting a little bit after that stolen base. Uh, 
as a one hopper speared by Rollins who throws him out. Matt Duffy hits a one hopper but right at Rollins. Dodgers dodge a bullet in the ninth inning because that ball was hit hard but Jimmy was right there. No runs one hit a man left and at the end of eight and a half innings a 4 4 tie. Here are the heroes with the walk-off victory. Way back in April, twice back-to-back -back by Guerrero and Kendrick. Then in May, Grandall and Van Slyke. Then in July, you had Hernandez. You had Kendrick in June. And the second, you had Andre Ethia's home run against the Angels. But that's history. Now is now. And Yasmani Grandall, followed by Jock Peterson, and then we'll see about Kenley Jansen. Jim Johnson started to warm up. He has stopped. And Romo's going to work. And ball one. Brandon Belt is going steady with the right field foul line. But the third baseman, that would be Matt Duffy, is way over to his left. Outfield almost straight away. Aoki, a little shallow and left. 2 0. Oh. The Romo, who had to come in and relieve Lopez and got away with it, now on his own. Two balls and no strikes. No fastballs away. No sliders with Grandall and 3 0 oh count. Jock Peterson on deck. And missed on four. So Grand Dog draws the walk. Boy, each team has certainly had chances. Center fielder, number 31, Jock Peterson. Now we're going to have a runner for Grand All, that's for sure. Jose Peraza, the infielder at second base, will run for Grand All. Peraza, the other night, stole third base. So he runs well. Bruce Boshi now talking to Posey and especially to Romo. Jock Peterson is coming up talking to Ron Renicky in looking at Peterson's work. He has only sacrificed once go, this Dodgers. year. Then of course whatever happens to Peterson Jansen spot is next up. A.J. Ellis comes out on deck. A.J. Ellis will bat for Jansen. But first, we have to see what happens with Peterson. 
So Parasa at first. Nobody out. Bottom of the ninth. 4-4. Four, four. Duffy comes in on the grass. The bunt up along first is a good bunt. Belt has to throw. Close play at first base. So Jock Peterson gets it down. Good bunt. Peraza goes to second on the sacrifice. And A.J. Ellis will be coming up with a chance to win the game. So a nice bunt by Jock. A.J. Ellis will be the batter. Dodgers have used Van Slice, Guerrero, Barnes, and now Ellis. So the Dodgers have used everyone unless they get into some pitchers. They've used everybody else. So Ellis batting for Jansen. And ball one. Again, you're up there thinking you're going to see a lot of sliders. He started Van Slyke with a fastball and then stayed with the slider. There's the slider off the plate. Ellis, I would think, is a pretty good hitter against the slider. A.J. goes to right field a lot and with authority. Two balls and no strikes. The outfield up. You have speed at second base in Peraza. And the 2-0 and pick. Peavy, Osich, Strickland, Lopez, and Romo. Anderson, Baez, Avilan, Nicasio, and Jansen. Jim Johnson gets up again in the Dodger bullpen. One out. Slider. Jimmy Rollins on deck. AJ Ellis, two for seven with a double. That's a 286 batting average against Romo. Rollins, two for four with a double against him. And here's the 3 0 pitch. In there. Romo has been brilliant. He's allowed just one run in his last 17 games. Three and one. Over that stretch with Romo, he has struck out 23 and walked one. Right hand batters. Are hitting 155 against him. Left hand hitters batting 426, and you have the switch hitting Rollins on deck. Three and one. And there goes Peraza to third. The throw to third. He's in there. So the second time in just a couple of games, Peraza has stolen third. Not much pose he could do. Took Romo a while to even deliver. The Peraza in there, hands first, and holding on. All right, three and two. That's a big play. Now the infield is up. The outfield is very shallow. Jock Peterson's bunt was a good part of the inning. And Peraza stealing third. 
now Aoki started to come in from left field, but instead Brandon Crawford coming to the mound. Boshi's going to go out and let's see what he does. Three and two the count. Whatever Boshi spotted, he apparently is going to ask for a review about the play at third base. That's the only other thing he has to hope for. Don Mattingly up the steps. Mike Winter, the crew chief, talking to Mattingly. Crowd roaring because it looks like Peraza was safe. The only problem, I guess, it was in a tangle down there. And Boshi wisely wants to take a look. He's in there ahead of the tag. Then his body, forced because of the running, starts to carry. And you're looking in there to see is he being tagged and you don't see a hand on the bag? It's awfully close. So what the crowd is seeing is one thing. What we have just shown you is another. Yes, he got to third, but did he stay on the bag? Or was that glove pinned on him as he went sliding across the bag? So the one shot we showed you made it very close, much closer than what they're showing so far. Here's the one. Watch this. There's the left hand safe. The glove is now on him. Watch that left hand. It is look the fingers. Are they off the bag? That's how close we're talking about a fingernail play. I can't tell. Can you? Well, imagine what a spot this is. Ninth inning. And he's safe. All right, it's three and two to Ellis. The call stands. Parazza at third, one out. Ellis trying to pick him up, and if not, Jimmy Rollins. Infield is up, the outfield very shallow. Well, if you're the hitter, you're going to look for the slider again or the fastball. And off speed and down goes Ellis. What a pitch. The last pitch you would expect, which is why he's been doing so well in relief. Shortstop, number 11, Jimmy Rollins. So that would have been ball four. Ellis strikes out. So now. Jimmy Rollins, and again we'll repeat, Romo has been incredible against right handers, but left handers are hitting 426. Parats at third. And ball one. Romo with a runner at third has three wild pitches. Rollins has two singles fly to center grounded out his single in the first inning he scored on Turner's double now Rollins I think is arguing about a ball and Jimmy walking away from home plate Marty Foster watch Romo Romo's claiming it's a balk but uh, the umpires Say no. Two out, ninth inning, four four. Fast sinker, one and one. 
Sergio Romo. Boy, has he been a vital part of the machinery for the Giants in their three championships. One ball and one strike. And ball two. Well, he went three and two with A.J. Ellis. You have Chase Utley, but he's another left hand batter. Two and one. Fouled away. To repeat, Jimmy Rollins two for four with a double in the past against Romo. Chase Utley is two for four. Barrazo just stole third. Barely down the line. And would you believe it? Romo strikes him out. That pitch might have been out of the strike zone. So the Dodgers are really frustrated, especially when Jimmy thought that Romo had balked in the run to win it. Instead, Romo does a high wire act, escapes. And we're heading for the 10 4 4. Eight hundred and fifty one looking at the ball game. Jose Peraza will come into the game along with Jim Johnson and A.J. Ellis. Ellis has a pinch hitter. Johnson to be the sixth Dodger pitcher and Peraza taking over at second base. Oh, wait a minute. Let's check. Peraza is in center field. Yep, as Utley now goes to his position. Oh, and one the count to Brandon Belt, who began the night with a double off the little box seats in right field. Then he singled the center in the third, grounded out and struck out since. 0 oh 2. So it's been a parade of pitchers Anderson, Baez, Avilan, Nicasio, Jansen, and Johnson, PV Osic, Strickland, Lopez, and Romo. Tenth inning, 4 4. Belt so anxious up there at the plate. 
Kind of a hitter who just can't wait for the ball to get there. One away. Strikes out a second time. And here's Buster Posey. Posey had a big at bat in the third inning. Bases loaded. And for the Giants, a chance to really do a number. But he popped up under the infield fly rule. Oh, and one. Fly to left, popped up, single to center, fly to right. Buster hitting 316. And that drops in nicely, an off speed pitch. Buster Posey, one for two. It was a double against Johnson. Just missed inside with that 95 mile an hour fastball. One ball and two strikes. Fastball. Jim Johnson, a big man. He's 6'5, 225, working on Posey. 32 years old. Originally drafted by the Orioles from Endicott, New York. Fastball whacked into right field. So Posey winds up going two for five. And here comes Marlon Bird. Bird had that slow ground ball into the hole on the right side, smothered and got away from Utley. Two runs scored. Then he doubled in the eighth inning to score Duffy and tie up the game. Then he found out about frustration as he went back on the home run by Andre Ethier. Just missed by inches as it sailed over the bullpen gate. Boy, that was a jammer. 95. Oh, and one. There's Marlin. Yeah, he needs another bat. Could not get around right off the handle. Mm. Didn't break, but there was a crack in it. Oh, and one to Marlin Bird. Bird with three RBIs tonight. Check. Swing, said Mike Winner. The so Bird has 14 runs batted in in his last five games with the Giants. Of course, he started off with that grand slam against Michael Waka and St. Louis. It's a great way to join a club. 0-2. Look out. The bird is hit by a pitch. And Brandon Crawford coming up. So again, each team has an opportunity to win the game. They had the one out base hit by Posey. Now you have the hit batter. And here's Brandon Crawford. Grounded to second, hit back to the box, fly to center, and walk. Juan Perez, right-hand batter, is out on deck. Slow breaking ball dropped in there nicely. Crawford with that 263 batting average, 19 home runs. Boy, he's throwing hard, 96. One ball and one strike. 
Posey at second, Bird at first, one out, tenth inning, four four. One and two. Posey and Bird with one out. And a little roller wide at first. Gonzalez feeding his pitcher, and the runners move up to second and third. So now the batter, Juan Perez. Who's been in just 12 games and is hitting 389? Or has seven for 18 with two runs batted in. He's a 28 year old. He was called up from Sacramento two weeks ago, taking the spot of Angel Pagan. And breaking ball strike. Nice pitch. In the giant bullpen, right hander Santiago Casilla. Fast ball, slow roll to Rollins. Then he gets it over. So another team has dodged yet another bullet. That's the way this game has been going. No runs, one hit, two left. And we're heading for the bottom of the 10th inning in a 4 4 tie. Giants and Dodgers all locked in. This would be the 13th of the meetings of the year. Two more left tomorrow night: Bumgarner and Granky. Wednesday night: Mike Leake and Clayton Kershaw. And then, of course, there will still be four more games left. That'll be the last week of September. They will be at AT&T Park on the 28th, 29th. 30th and 1st of October. So the pitchers anticipating their meetings. And now we get Santiago Casilla out of the Dominican. He'll be pitching to Utley, Gonzalez, and Turner. Jim Johnson made 17 pitches in the 10th inning. Utley fly deep to center, struck out, fly to center. And then doubled in the eighth inning, a big gamble when he singled off Lopez' leg. Ball carried into left field. Aoki looked, would nail him easily, and Aoki made a poor throw. 
Utley survived at second, got the third, but stayed there. And the strike. Romo made a total of 24 pitches. And now it's up to Cassia. Big fella out of the Dominican. One ball and one strike. Cassia, like so many players coming out of the Dominican, admitted finally his real name and his birthday. He was playing under the name of Jairo Garcia, but he aged two years and ten months when he revealed his true name. Change. Two and one. Been playing a lot. He was originally signed by the Oakland A's 15 years ago. He just turned 35. Biggest year with the Giants, 2012. He saved 25, but now he's behind three and one to Chase Utley. The outfield deep on the rim. The infield as far back as they can go without being on the grass. Three and one to Chase Utley. Big gap at third base. Slice foul. He might have been trying to go that way. Matt Duffy playing way over. Tempted to go that way for sure, especially on a three and one pitch. Now three and two. Case hitting 213. Five home runs, 31 runs batted in. Fast ball. Nice pick at second base by Adrianza. And we have one away here in the 10th inning. First baseman, number 23. Adrian Gonzalez had lined out to left and flied to left, but in the sixth inning, he homered, got a fastball around the knees, and it went into right center field about halfway up in the pavilion. Last time up, Gonzalez grounded to first. And ball one. Boy, with the left hand hitters, they move Duffy even farther from third base. He's just about in the hole at shortstop with Crawford playing up the middle. Fast ball pulled, belt. He'll do it himself. Two down in the 10th, and Justin Turner. Turner doubled in a run in the first inning. Since then, popped up to second, popped up to third, and walked intentionally. Turner against Cassia, 0 for 4. Hitting back of him, Scott Van Slyke. And ball one. PV Osich, Strickland, Lopez, Romo, and Cassia. And that's lifted to right field. Coming in, waiting at Marlon Bird. And so the 10th inning is in the books, and we're heading for the 11th, 4 4.
We move to the 11th inning in a 4-4 tie. It'll be Gregor Blanco, then Ere Adrianaz, and then Aoki. Jim Johnson, who came in and pitched well, now had to get out of a scrape and got Crawford and Perez, the pinch hitter. So now it's Blanco again. Blanco has two hits, and both hits coming leading off an inning. Madison Bumgarner and Zach Granke tomorrow night. Bumgarner with a record of 16 and 6. And Zach Granke, 14 and 3. But right now, it's Jim Johnson starting off against Gregor Blanco. Blanco in the ninth inning led off with a single, stole second after. Adriana has failed to get the bunt down. Oh, and one. For Dodgers, Brett Anderson for five, then Baez, Avilan, Nicasio, Jansen, and now Johnson. JP Howell was up in the pen, but he's still in reserve. 0-1. Oh one. one ball, one strike. 40,851 on a Monday night. Quite a few working tomorrow, though they're gone home. Ground ball to Utley. One away. Adrianza coming up. Adrianza. Fouled out in the ninth inning. Trying to bunt. Ball one. Adrianza 0 for 1 tonight. He has three hits in his last 32 at bats. So that's less than a 100 batting average over that stretch. 2 and 0. Batting 188 overall with runners in scoring position. He has spent all the year AAA with the River Cats. And down there, he was doing very well. 316. So, Adrianza up there with a two and one count. <laughs> Chopper back to Johnson. So, just like that, two out, top of the 11. That'll bring up Nori Aoki, who is grounded out and walked. Grounded out two more times and fly to left. Well, those bright eyes are starting to dim, huh? In mom's lap. Oh, yeah. It's about that time. One and one. Aoki, five home runs, 26 runs batted in. Two and one. When the Dodgers come up in the bottom of the 11th, it'll be Van Slyke, Crawford, and Peraza. Two and two. Johnson pitching well, pitching in a hurry. 
Oh yeah, there's a lot of energy right there. Oh, <laughs> you bet. <laughs> Demon and Pythias. Two and two. Little chopper to short. Rollins with that gun. Throws him out. So Johnson has done well pitching two innings, and we're heading to the bottom of the 11th in a 4 4 tie. Dodgers scored a run in the first inning. Giants scored three in the third. Dodgers scored three in the sixth to turn it around 4 3. Giants got a run in the eighth inning to make it 4 4. And here we are in the 11th. Scott Van Slyke, Carl Crawford, Jose Parazza. In that order. Van Slyke came in in the game batting for Ethier here in the eighth inning and popped up. Ball one. That was his at bat against Sergio Romo. Twelve pitchers in the game six for each side. And ball two. In the Dodger bullpen, Chris Hatcher begins to warm up. The game has just moved on over the four hour mark. Two and zero, oh. and three and zero. Oh. Castilla. Has walked 19, struck out 46. He has Crawford on deck. As he had picked up a walk in the ninth inning, that's when Peraza eventually stole third, but the Dodgers came up empty. 3 0 to Ben Slight in there. Foul that fastball back three and two. When the game started, we had forty thousand eight hundred and fifty-one. Good portion, since it is a Monday night. Brett Anderson is still hanging on. He was unlucky on one ground ball, and it cost him an opportunity. Ethier helped him with a home run to get him off the hook. Three and two. 
And a mile high foul. Two Giants trying to get under it. They reach over. And a good play by Matt Duffy. So Duffy and Crawford going over. They go together right there, and it's Duffy. So a nice play by the giant third baseman. One away in the 11th inning. Carl Crawford grounded out, single, and a couple of more ground balls. One for four. Got around as far as third in the fifth inning. After stealing second base. O and one. On deck, Jose Parata. One ball and one strike. In the dugout, Clayton Kershaw wearing a helmet, talking to Mark McGuire. Time. If you are not keeping score, Johnson is in. Jock Peterson spot. Bad ball, one and two, the count. So it looks like Clayton Kershaw will be the pinch hitter for Jim Johnson if they get there. You have Crawford, then Parazza, and then Johnson spot. Dodgers have used all their reserves. Line drive base hit to left field. Cassie, I think, angry at himself, threw a high changeup, and Crawford just stroked it. Mm -hmm. He is hot. Up there and slapped into left field. Yep. Big slow breaking ball, and Crawford had plenty of time. So you have Crawford and now Parazza and you have Clayton Kershaw on deck. One out in the 11 4 4. Fastball. Parazza ran for Grandall. When Yasmani walked in the ninth inning, he was sacrificed to second by Peterson, stole third, safe by an eyelash, but stayed there when Ellis and Rollins struck out. Parazza has 10 at bats and he's three for 10. Fast ball jammed him at 95. Two pitchers who are going to be working tomorrow night. Both pretty handy with the bat. Zach Granke and Madison Bumgarner. But I'm not sure whether they're in the dugout or not. So it'll be Kershaw will be the pinch hitter. If there is a 12th inning, the Giants have Duffy, Belt, and Posey. Little roller foul, and Parach is still there, 0 and 2. Jose from Venezuela. Originally signed by the Braves, he figured to be the Braves' number one prospect. But the deal that sent Alex Wood, Johnson, Avilan, Dodgers sent Hector Oliveira, Paco Rodriguez, and Zach Bird. Oh, and two. Oh, 
Fastball got him. So at 95, Peraza goes down. Now with two out, Clayton Kershaw coming up. Take another look at that pitch that made it in the zone. So Kershaw's coming up. And you wonder with two out whether they would run Crawford. Kyle Crawford has stolen four out of five. A.J. Ellis on deck. There he goes. And sure enough, he is in there. Well, that certainly figured. And now Posey out to talk to Cassia. Dodgers with the running run at second base. And Clayton Kershaw, the batter. Posey throwing from his knees. Crawford had a good jump. Dodgers trying to pick him up. One and one. Well, the last day of August is hanging on. Four four in the eleven. Good breaking ball, but he laid off it and it missed. Two and one the count. And Marty Foster now. Angry. I'm not sure whether Cassia said something, thinking that pitch was a strike. Boshi started up to try and save his pitcher. That was enough to growl about, for sure. Two balls and one strike. Ground ball to the right side. Adrianza makes the play. We head for the 12th. Four runs, 10 hits for the Giants. Four runs, nine hits for the Dodgers. We'll be back in a moment for the 12th. Kicking and screaming, we have a 4 4 tie. Chris Hatcher will become the seventh Dodger pitcher. They've actually used eight if you count Clayton Kershaw as a pinch hitter. Anderson, Baez, Avilan, Natasio, Jansen, Johnson, and now Hatcher. He'll be facing the number two hitter, Mac Duffy. 
Then Brandon Belt and Buster Posey. Matt Duffy grounded out single to right scored a run grounded out again walked, stole a base and scored a run and grounded out. One for four with a walk and two runs scored. And ball one. In looking at Duffy, he is 0 for 2 in the past against Hatcher. And he has the count 2 and 0 his way. In fact, looking at Hatcher's work, Buster Posey is 2 for 5 against him. And so is Marlon Bird. So two balls and no strikes. Two and one. George Contos is up now in the giant bullpen. 13 pitchers in the game so far. Dodgers using seven. Two and one. Fast ball and a high fly ball. It's playable. Peraza has to go to track from after that. One away. You just wonder a guy like Duffy hits the ball that far and he weighs Number about nine, 170. You imagine a couple of more pounds on that lanky frame. He might have hit that thing out. One away. Brandon Belt doubled to right, single to center, grounded to second, and struck out twice. The so Brandon. With his 17 home runs, two for five. Hit off the end of the bat. He was guessing fastball out in front of it. 0 and 1. Belt, when he doubled and singled in his first two at bats, really impressive. He hits a mile high fly ball. Look out for this now. Right at the wall. And making the catch is Van Slyke. So two long fly balls. And both outs. Two down. 28, Buster. Boy, the sigh of relief here at Dodger Stadium would take leaves off trees on that fly ball. So here's Buster Posey. The note we wanted to tell you about Brandon Belt after his first two at bats tonight. Belt was nine for 14. But he has cooled off now. And he turns around to go 0 for 4. He almost hit it out. One ball and no strikes. Two and oh. Posey two for five in the past. Marlon Bird on deck. Also two for five against Hatcher. Foul ball right into the Dodger dugout. Buster's biggest at bat was in the third inning when he came up with the bases loaded and popped it up. Two and one. Two out, 12th inning, 4 4. Two and two.
So Buster going all the way behind the plate. The Dodgers started Grandall, but A.J. Ellis has been in there after appearing as a pinch hitter in the ninth inning. Go so two and two. And a little slice job into right field. Nice bit of hitting. Buster just went down to get it. Slapped it the other way. Number six, Marlon Bird. So that means Posey is three for six against Hatcher. And here's Bird, two for five. Tonight, Bird has two hits. He's been hit by a pitch. Grounded out. Popped up. His first hit was that little bleeder into the hole on the right side. Utley playing him more up the middle, had to come racing all the way back to his left. Got there, couldn't make a play, and two runs scored. Ball one. Great way to start your career with a new club. 14 RBIs in your first five games. Dodgers running them all in. Anderson, Baez, Avilan, Nicasio, Jansen, Johnson, and now Hatcher. Two and oh. When Joe Morgan played the great Hall of Fame second baseman, Joe as a left hand batter, his left elbow would pound his rib cage, and I mean pound it. Uh, just watching Bird, his right arm, he doesn't do that exactly, but he makes you think of Morgan if you ever watch Joe play. Just that movement. And ball three. Well, you have Crawford on deck. He's been a very hot hitter. Three and oh, the count to Marlon Bird. And three and one. So we go three and two. That gives the Giants a little edge. Means that Posey will be going. Marlon Bird with the Giants has walked three times and struck out 14. So he's not up there to look. There goes the runner, and down he goes. No runs, one hit, a man left, and we're heading to the bottom of the 12th, 4-4. Four, four.
Here's four runs, nine hits. And coming out of the giant bullpen is George Contos. So Contos becomes the seventh giant pitcher and the 14th pitcher in the game. George with a record of two and two and a very good earned run average of 1.8. He's allowed eight of his last 16 inherited runners to score. Though this time they come in and start him with the inning. The opposition hitting 129, but of late they're coming back after him. The hitters are seven for the last 18. Left hand batters have hit just 187 against him. He will start off facing A.J. Ellis. You think about it, the Dodgers have used. Yasmani Grandal, they pinch it Austin Barnes, they pinch it Ellis, and then he stayed in. And all the while behind the plate, Andrew Susak had pinch hit. So Buster Posey is going the distance. <laughs> oh, and one. Ellis four home runs, 12 runs batted in. George Contos out of Illinois went to school at Northwestern and was originally drafted by the Yankees. And that's a strike. 0 and 2. Down and dirty, one ball and two strikes. You know, George Contos has given up two home runs at Dodger Stadium. One was to Jock Peterson. The other was two years ago, opening day, and he gave it up to Clayton Kershaw, who hit it dead center for the game-winning home run. That slapped into right, slicing a diving catch by Marlon Byrd. So Ellis robbed of a base hit. Right fielder makes a good play. And we have one out in the 12th inning. Down, number 11, Jimmy Rollins. Bird didn't hesitate. He went right after it and made a fine play. So one out in the 12th inning. A little applause from Contos and the batter Jimmy Rollins. Rollins has two hits, scored two runs, two for five. A little roller, Adrianza there. Come So Chase Utley will come up. Utley had a double in the eighth inning. He is one four five. Adrian Gonzalez on deck. Utley, thirty six years old. He'd be thirty seven in December. And ball one. Madison Bumgarner and Zach Granke tomorrow night. We're almost running running into tomorrow morning. That's off the corner. Two and oh the count. Adrian Gonzalez. One for five with a home run on deck. High fly ball down the line. Aoki is right there. 
go a quick 12th inning and at the end of 12 a 4-4 tie. Gave up a base hit in the 12th inning after two long fly balls. One of them hit by Brandon Belt. Looked awfully close to going out before it was caught. So now in the 13th, Brandon Crawford will lead it off. Crawford, 0 for 4 with a walk. Hatcher made. 17 pitches in the 12th inning. Contos made only eight in the bottom half. And a strike, 0 and 1. Crawford has started the night hitting 412 against the Dodgers, but they have shut him down. 0 for 4 with a walk. 0 and 2. Four runs, 11 hits for the Giants. Four runs, nine hits for the Dodgers. Oh, and two. And did that hit him? I believe it did. So the Giants had Bird hit in the 10th inning. Now Crawford is hit by a pitch and very slow to get up and then he goes back down again. Got him on the back leg I believe it missed the front leg. Mm hmm. Yep. And I believe got him right on the calf. Mm. Now remember the Giants have used everybody but Justin Maxwell, who is an outfielder. Crawford wanting to stay in. They I'm need him to stay in. Pitcher number 70, George Contos. George Contos will be coming up in what you would appear to be a bunch situation. Crawford, meanwhile, wants to make sure he can run. In the 10th inning, with one out, Posey singled and Bird was hit by a pitch. But the Dodgers wiggled off the hook. Now the leadoff man is hit. And here's Contos. Joe and Bunt. Ball one. 
Contos has one sacrifice. The guy they like to be up there with the bat right now is Vogel song. He has eight sacrifices. Joe and Bunt Hunter coming in. And the bunt foul. One and one. Four four in the 13th. Roberto Kelly now talking to Contos. Crawford seems to be running okay. Giants have left 10 so far. Dodgers have left seven. And the bunt foul. One and two. For the Giants to get Crawford aboard opening it up. Come on now, we're going to ask questions in a little while. We're going to review all every pitch. One and two. He's still going to try. And he's done. The so Contos, unable to bunt, strikes out. Hatcher's second strikeout. And the batter will be Gregor Blanco. Blanco single to short, single to left. He's two for five. He has a stolen base. Bill Hayes offered to talk to Brandon Crawford again. Giants need Crawford to play. Never mind run. Crawford doesn't do a lot of running anyway. He is four for eight in stolen bases. Because there's always a chance they'll play hit and run. And Brandon has a very short lead over there. <laughs> Owen one to Blanco. Who was shaken up when he stole second base? That was in the ninth inning. Only one regular player left. That's Justin Maxwell. Dodgers have used all their reserves, and the Giants almost all of theirs. That's off the plate. One ball and one strike. If you weren't with us earlier in the game, Clayton Kershaw appeared as a pinch hitter for the Dodgers and grounded out. That was back in the 11th inning. One ball and one strike. Adrianza on deck. Well, we're just eight minutes away from tomorrow. Slapped in the air to left field. Right there is Crawford. Brandon Crawford has to hold. And here comes Adrianza. Adrianza hitting 177. Number one, Ihiri Adrianza. Though so we'll see how things go with him with two down. Dodgers will have Gonzalez, Turner, and Van Slyke in the bottom of the inning.
Adrian is a switch hitter. Hitting about 160 this side of the plate. On one. Madison Bumgarner and Zach Granke tomorrow night. Game two. Mike Leak, Clayton Kershaw on Wednesday. Dodgers then go to San Diego, then to Anaheim and Arizona. Oh, and one. Fly ball, shallow center, gone out is Rollins, and that'll be that. So the inability to contest the bunt took all the pressure off the Dodgers. So here they come. Gonzalez, Turner, Van Slyke. Bottom of the 13th, 4 4. Bottom of the 13th inning in a 4-4 tie. The Dodgers now will have Gonzalez, Turner, and Van Slyke. Adrian Gonzalez, one hit tonight, one for five, but a big one. It was a two-run home run in the sixth inning. Tied up the game. Ethier hit a home run to put the Dodgers in front. Only to have the Angels come back and tie it up in the eighth. Ball one. George Contos against the Dodgers. And we'll check and see. Adrian Gonzalez, one for five against him. And a strike to balance it up one and one. Fast ball, but there's Crawford right there in the second base to take a hit away from him. Well, Gonzalez grounding out to Brandon one away. And the batter, Justin Turner. Third baseman, number 10, Justin Turner. Turner doubled in a run in the first inning. Since then, popped up to second, popped up to third, walked intentionally, and flied to right. It'll be interesting to see if Buster Posey plays first base tomorrow night.
And ball one. Turner who has had such a wonderful year right on top of the great year last year. 15 home runs 52 RBIs and ball two to the backstop. Turner hitting 294. One out bottom of the 13th. 4-4. Four four. Two minutes to midnight. That drops in there nicely. Two and one the count. Scott Van Slyke on deck. Infield swung around so that Brandon Belt is far off and away from the bag at first. Two and two. 40,851 were here. We might have half of that. 15 to 20,000 left. There you go, one minute away. One minute away from September. Wow. Two and two. Checked on a pretty good fastball. There it is, straight up. Welcome to tomorrow. Three and two, the count to Justin Turner. Fouled away down the line. Three and two. Giants are three games under 500 on the road. They've struggled of late. Giants have lost four of their last five series away from AT&T Park. Dodgers lead by three and a half. Big win tonight takes a lot of heat off them and puts a lot of pressure on the Giants. And there's ball four. So the Dodgers have left seven. And Scott Van Slyke coming up. Van Slyke came in to bat. For Andre Ethier in the eighth inning and popped up. Last time up, he fouled out. Light breeze picking up and blowing from left to right. Turning around now to blow right to left. One ball and no strikes. There you have it. Usual breeze left to right. One ball and no strikes. And a bluff over at first and a foul ball out of play. One ball and one strike to count. Longest game that uh, I ever brought to us. I think 23. 23 innings. One in Houston. And I think there was another one in Pittsburgh. One ball and one strike.
four runs, 11 hits for the Giants, four runs, nine hits for the Dodgers. Last run scored in the eighth inning. There goes the runner. Big swing and a miss. Throw on a hop. Gets off the glove of Adrianza. So Turner is safely in. So with one out, Justin Turner steals second base. Dodgers again have a man in scoring position. Posey short hop the second baseman. That makes it awfully tough to try and short hop and make a tag. So Turner is in there. For Justin Turner, that is his second stolen base. Turner walking around at second base as if he maybe got a strawberry on that slide. One and two the count. On deck, Carl Crawford. Two and two. Boy, what a parade of pitches. Kiwi, Osich, Strickland, Lopez, Romo, Casilla, Contos, Anderson, Baez, Avilan, Nicasio, Jansen, Johnson, Hatcher. Two and two. So Van Slyke chasing one off the plate. Down he goes. Two down in the 13th. And Carl Crawford coming up with a chance to be a hero. Crawford tonight single in the fifth inning stole a base single in the 11th stole a base and they're going to take the bat out of his hands they'll take their chances going up against Jose Paracha Paracha got into the game running for Grandall stole third and then in his only at bat he struck out. So in a moment, Dodgers will have runners at first and second with two out. And Jose Parraza, young man out of Venezuela, will be coming up. All right, Posey out to talk to Contos. And here comes Parraza, but also here comes Bruce Boshi. Down in the bullpen, Mike Broadway is warming up. He'd have really had some name with the New York Giants. Tonto saying okay, so I guess he feels he has enough tank. So Boshi heard what he wanted to hear, and in a moment. Santos will go up against Paraza for the Dodgers, and it's usually a dynamite stat. I mean, there's a million stats, but this one tells you exactly what kind of a night it's been. The Dodgers, with runners in scoring position, are one for 13. Adrian Gonzalez, two-run home run tonight. Clayton Kershaw, a pinch hitter. Quite an evening. All right, Contos ready, so is Peraza. Turn is the man at second base, two out. And ball one.
four runs, 11 hits for the Giants, four runs, nine hits for the Dodgers. And ball two. Now let's see they're going to put him on. And you have the pitcher Chris Hatcher coming up. So it's the old story. Hey if you're going to put a man on. What difference is the base. Though Boshi decides all right. If I'm going to be beaten in this spot. It's going to be against Chris Hatcher. I'm checking. I don't believe Hatcher has had an at bat. So the base is loaded and two out. Boshi walks Peraza and loads him up. And now it's simply pitcher batter. He is 0 for 8 in his career, and as we said, does not have an at bat this year. Now the crowd coming alive, everybody up. And the strike. Since he's never had in that bat this year, pretty hard to tell you whether he's a fairly good hitter or not. Turner at third, he's the important man with two out. Fastball lifted down the right field line, coming over third and foul ground. Well, at least he made contact. Fly ball to right field, caught by Bird in foul territory. Dodgers lead three, so they have now left ten. And at the end of 13 innings, four, four. Or you could say today's probable pitchers since we've crossed over into tomorrow. But one way or another, it'll be Madison Bumgarner, 16 and 6, against Zach Granke, 14 and 3. Two remarkable pitchers, two pretty good hitters. And of course, Bumgarner has five home runs. Granke, who is no slouch with the bat, Granke has two home runs. So that should be a dandy of a ball game and hope he'll be out here with us. Meanwhile, we move to the 14th inning. Aoki, Duffy, and Belt. So Granky's still here. I'm not sure if Madison Bumgarner has gone home or not. 
Remember they've already used Kershaw as a pinch hitter. Ball one to Aoki. He's been on base once walked in the third inning scored a run. 0 for 5. One ball and no strikes. Two and oh. Aoki, Duffy, Belt, and if anybody gets on, Posey. We've seen, among other things tonight, the rare intentional walk with runners at first and second. High foul down the line. No play. Two and one to count. It's got to be a tough time for all the players. All right, Aoki back up there, two and one. And it's a fly ball, pretty deep to left center, but playable. Karatsu is there. So one out in the 14. Number five. So for Aoki, the leadoff man, he goes 0 for 6. And now here's Duffy. Duffy is one for five. Base hit scored a run walk stole a base and scored a run. Ground ball to the hole Rollins the long throw not in time couldn't be that accurate anyway. Jimmy was running towards the left field foul line. So Duffy comes up with a base hit to the hole it's short. Duff second hit. Number nine, Brandon Belt. All right, Brandon Belt. He doubled in the first inning, singled in the third. 0 for 4 since. So he's 2 for 6. Hatcher, as you can see, has now made 34 pitches. His career high is 55. But not this year. He made 55 pitches in a game back in 2012. J.P. Howell, who was up yesterday with Jansen back around the eighth inning, J.P. is up again. One ball and no strikes. To Brandon Belt, Buster Posey on deck. Close. Duffy just did get back. Duffy, when he stole a base earlier, he is eight for eight in steals. So they really have to keep an eye on him. One ball and no strikes to Brandon Belt. Parazza is as deep as you'll see a center fielder. Jose, no doubt feeling. I don't want to have to go back after a ball it over my head. A lot easier to come in. You know, normally an infielder, and he's way out there. Hatcher's high this year, 26 pitches, so he's exceeded that. This is going to be number 36. One ball, no strikes. One and one. Well, the game started at 7:10. So it's five hours and eight minutes old. 
Of course, the longest Dodger game was that 22 inning game in Houston. That was seven hours and 14 minutes. One ball and one strike. Very close. Hatcher quick getting over there. One and one to Brandon Belt. Off speed and a big swing. Belt likes that ball up. Most of the swings where he has missed tonight, the pitch has been up. Last time up, he hit one that sent Van Slyke to the wall in right field. One ball, two strikes. Foul back. Ellis got a little of that. Dodgers have used up their catchers. Giants have used up their catchers. And for Buster Posey, he's going it alone. And Buster's on deck. Austin Barnes has already appeared. So is Yasmani Grandal. One and two. So for Brandon Belt, who began the night with a double and a single, since then he has struck out three times, grounded out, and flied out. Number 28. Buster Posey. There you go. Of course, the 26 uh, inning game in Boston was the longest game ever played, but the longest time was the game we played in Houston. Seven hours and 14. That's when I had done an extra inning game the night before, then did the 23, then did 13 the next day. And there was a telegram waiting for me in Houston after the game. And the telegram read Lou Gehrig was a wimp and it was sent by a great friend of mine a wonderful sports writer in San Diego by the name of Phil Collier. Well here's Buster anything but a wimp going all the way and swinging the bat with three hits. Posey batting 319. Fly to left. Dodgers are fortunate. Posey gets three hits. Only one. No, none of them. With a runner on. And the one time that he came up with the bases loaded, he popped up. That's the way this marvelous game is played. Crawford about 10 feet from the track in left field. Now with two out you got to be looking for a Duffy to try and steal. One and one. Back in the eighth inning Duffy walk and with two out Marlon Bird coming up. Duffy stole second and Bird doubled the right. So if Duff sees an opening, Bird's on deck. Because he knows even if he's successful and steals second, they probably walk Posey. One and one. Let's do 16 home runs. One and one. Ground ball to the hole, base hit. Duffy goes to second. So the Giants have two on, two out. They've already left 11 men on base. And here's Marlon Bird. 
Marlon Bird hit back to the box. Had that single on the infield that meant two runs. Popped up. Doubled to right to drive in Duffy. Hit by a pitch. And last time up. Struck out. Losing Angel Pagan and Hunter Pence. Two great losses for the Giants. And they've certainly been fortunate in picking up Marlon Bird. So two on, two out. Bird, 22 home runs. Fouled away. With the Giants, he has three home runs, 17 runs batted in. Bird very aggressive. He doesn't walk very often. He was hit by a pitch tonight. Bird for the year, 115 strikeouts, 26 walks. 0 and 1. Two out, two on, 4-4 four, four in the 14th. 0 oh and 2. When the Dodgers come up in the bottom of the 14th inning, it'll be A.J. Ellis, then Rollins and Utley. Brandon Crawford on deck and a no ball two strike count on Marlon Bird. Owen two. Got him. So the Giants leave two more they've left 13 and at the end of 13 and a half inning it's a 4-4 tie. Four tie. We're in the bottom of the 14th inning. Mike Broadway, the number eight pitcher used by the Giants, comes in. Mike is from Paducah, Illinois. He was the Braves' fourth round pick back in 2005. From Galconda, Illinois. 6'5, 215 pounds, and 28 years old. Basically, fastball and slider. 
He had surgery on his elbow in April of the 11th. He had to go back and get checked to have another exploratory procedure. He was hooked to an IV and he was just about wheeled into the operating room he said and the lights went out. There was a power outage. So Dr. Andrews offered to perform the surgery when he returned. But Broadway said you know my father and I just don't feel like waiting. Never had the surgery and here he is. Ball one. What he did have the platelet rich plasma shots started working with an instructor on movement patterns of his arm. Pain became manageable and then it went away. Two and all. AJ Ellis followed by Jimmy Rollins and then Chase Utley. Giants four runs 13 hits. Dodgers four runs nine hits. That's in there. So with all of his problems Broadway still hits 95. Two and one. Ball three. Three and one to A.J. Ellis, four four, bottom of the fourteenth. And ball four. So the Dodgers again have a man aboard as Posey goes out to talk to Broadway. By the way, while Chris Hatcher was in there, he made 45 pitches. 45. Well, here's Jimmy Rollins. He has two hits. Two for six. Both times he got aboard each time he came home on a double by Turner in the first inning and a home run by Adrian Gonzalez in the sixth. On deck, Chase Utley. Rollins bunch in the air foul. Oh, and one. Rollins in his lead off role doesn't get very many chances. He is sacrificed only once. No balls, one strike. One and one. For the Giants, TV, Osage, Strickland, Lopez, Romo, Casilla, Contos, and Broadway. For the Dodgers, Anderson, Baez, Avilan, Nicasio, Jansen, Johnson, and Hatcher. One and one. That's a strike. Ron Renicky trying to move his man along. Utley waiting on deck. One ball and two strikes. Then Enrique Hernandez figured. One and two. Full swing foul. After a while, you forget the team score. Was way back in the third inning when the Giants scored three. It was their first inning when the Dodgers scored a run. 
Then you have the two home runs in the sixth inning and the Giants finally tying it way back in the eighth. One and two. And base hit into right field. Down to second base goes Ellis. So after unable to get the bunt down, Rollins swings away and comes up with his third hit of the night. Second baseman number 26, Chase. So now the Dodgers have first and second. Well, let's wait and see exactly what the Giants do. So Rollins really puts the Giants in a mess. Dave Rigetti out to the mound. A Dodger win gives them a four and a half game lead. Six games left between the two clubs. So Matt Duffy had something to say. Brandon Belt had something to say. So now let's see how they set up. Well, Chase Utley bunt with two on, nobody out. You know Adrian Gonzalez would be walked intentionally. So the fellow who would be on the spot would be Justin Turner. Huntley has one hit, one for six. Ellis at second, Rollins at first, nobody out. Belt is up, Duffy is up, Adrianza and Crawford are back. So it looks like the situation is for Huntley to get the bunt down. Not showing bunt. Ground ball, base hit. Ellis to third. They will hold him on a hopper back to the infield. So Huntley, a ground ball single, and the Dodgers have loaded the bases, and the batter is Adrian Gonzalez. Huntley got a good fastball right out over the plate at the knees. Got a perfect pitch to him. So bases loaded, nobody out, and the batter will be Adrian Gonzalez. Giants in one of those spots that nowhere to hide. Now Bruce Boshi is coming out, and let's see what his fertile mind has come up with. Gonna be a switch. We finally see the last of the Mohicans for the Giants, Justin Maxwell. Will go into right field and Marlon Bird coming out. Obviously, Boshi feels that Maxwell has a stronger throwing arm than Marlon Bird. Now we'll see if it's a two for one switch. Yes, Yasmero Petit will come in from the bullpen. So he can put Petit. In Berg spot, and that would put Maxwell batting in the number seven spot. And with that, we'll be right back.
Dodgers are concerned. Bases loaded, nobody out, and Adrian Gonzalez, Justin Turner, and Scott Van Slyke can do up. Justin Maxwell is now in right field, and Yasmero Petit trying to get Adrian. Gonzalez has a home run. He is one for six. The infield is up. Gonzalez in three of his at bats hit ground balls. Outfield about as shallow as you can play. And Petit ready. Off speed fly ball to deep left field. They wind up being a single. Everybody moves up 90 feet. Dodgers win at 5 4. And what is more important, they now lead the Giants by four and a half games. And they have Granke and Kershaw ready to go back to back. A long, tough game for both teams. For the Dodgers, five runs, 12 hits, no errors. For the Giants, four runs, 13 hits, and no errors. The winning pitcher would be Chris Hatcher. The loser would be Mike Broadway. And certainly the play of the game would be Adrian Gonzalez. Long fly ball. It'll go as a, a single and the winning run comes in. So that'll be enough for tonight, don't you think? And even for tomorrow morning. But they'll be back after each other tomorrow night. And we'll talk to you then. Till then, for all of us, to all of you, a very pleasant good morning, everybody.